Welcome to episode 88 of the Misanthropod. I'm Snipe, and as always, I am joined by Wib. Say hello. Hello. And I am also joined by drummer Matt. Say hello. Hello. How are you, lovely <laughs> gentlemen, this fine day? Hey, all right, all right. We're, we're running round like blue ass flies because we've got a flat inspection tomorrow. Yep. Oh, fun. I've already heard uh, Jeff upstairs, like literally smashing multiple things around and also having Dis- a big argument with his girlfriend. Destroying so. the evidence is what I was about to say, but then when he brought his girlfriend into it, I don't want to say that anymore. No, it's probably not uh, good. Uh, but yeah, Matt, how, how's it going Going your end? Yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm sleepy, but I'm I'm okay other than that. How are you, Snipe? Yeah, okay. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Everything's Everything fine. Is Thank fine. you. Everything is fine. There's nothing weird about recording on a Monday. A Monday evening. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're sorry. that I, I know that recently the podcast has been coming out at some very strange times, but that's only going to increase for the next few <laughs> few episodes whilst we figure out exactly where it's going to come out, because Matt is now back in the UK and is working full time again, so we have to move where we record so we don't know when it's going to come out because we're currently recording this when normally it should be coming out. Honestly, yeah. the struggle is immense. I mean, when will they build our statue? <laughs> when will they build our statue? It's um, not fair. Podcasts, it's so, so hard for everybody mm. concerned, especially the listeners. <laughs> especially. In fact, exclusively, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, not much to generally talk about this time. Uh, apart from, hey, Necron uh, video came out. Yeah. And yeah, that's a cool thing that has happened. <laughs> uh, it's doing pretty well. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it, please. And if you've already seen it... Watch it again. Watch it again. Uh, <laughs> um, this will please us. Do this in my name. <laughs> outtakes have just when we when we are recording this um, gone out from it because if you don't know if uh, if you are supporting us on Patreon then you get access to outtakes that we put up for each of our Codex compliant videos and there'll also be a little extra video of the stupidest thing we've probably ever made that will also be going up as a Patreon video because we don't want more <laughs> witnesses than are necessary. <laughs> It's probably for the best, and that'll, yeah. you, that'll probably be out before you hear this. So, yeah. This is patreon.com slash snipe and web, yeah! And for those who can't, who don't, who can't or don't want to do on the Patreon, like, you're not missing out that much, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks. But I don't want people to feel left out if they, like, you know, can't or won't or don't want to for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. it is. Obviously, we, we don't put up anything that's, like, substantial on the Patreon because... We know what it's like to not be able yeah. to do something like that. So, you know, it's just, a, you know, there's just outtakes and, and the little things. But uh, we very much appreciate the people that uh, um, support us because, well, it helps um, pay the bills. <laughs> so it stops us being on the street, which is very, very nice. We'll complain about rogue trader land raider turning circles for food. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> That's almost exactly what you do. Our <laughs> lives have reached a very strange point that I don't fully understand or comprehend, but I'm very grateful for. <laughs> so, with all that out of the way, wibble it. What you been up to? What have I been up to? No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a couple of things. So, uh, to cap off what I've mentioned in the last couple of podcasts, uh, finished uh, the Peter Capaldi era of Doctor Who. Nice. So got through the whole of that, and I've watched the first couple of the Jodie Whitaker, Jodie Jody Whitaker um, ones. And I've, I've has it completely destroyed every Doctor Who episode ever? No, I actually quite like her. Yeah, <gasps> oh, I'm glad. I'm, I'm. Don't let the internet know. They'll be <laughs> mad. Um, no, I was. Um, so there's obviously a bit of a different tone in in, in her thing, but that's obvious because it, much like when it went from um, Russell T Davis to um, Stephen Moffat, like, 
when the main cast and the showrunner like change over, there's going to be a bit in a change of tone. Yeah. And there is a bit, like, I, I will say, like, how, like looking back on it, I, I do feel that the um, Moffat era felt like it was skewed a little bit older. And for, from the first couple of episodes, uh, this is obviously, like, I may be hideously wrong here, but it feels like the Jodie Whittaker stuff is a little bit older still. Okay. So less oh, less aiming at, at literal children, which is mm. what the Russell T. Davis stuff was very definitely aimed at. For yeah, the yeah, part. yeah. Um. I could say it might, might be wrong on that, but I, I didn't. I have. Uh, I, I am enjoying um, her so far. What I was surprised about, because you know, obviously, the the Doctor has been a guy for the entire run of the show, and I was wondering how. Though you know, it, it's it's fucking established that Time Lords can become women, so it's not like it's it's not breaking canon or anything, unless you've never watched an episode of the show. Um, <laughs> Then, but I, but I did go. I did wonder how long it would take me to kind of get used to this because sometimes when a doctor is quite different to a previous one, it can take you a little bit of a like, what's it, like adjustment period to get used to a new doctor. Uh, whereas, like instantly, she felt like the doctor. No, oh, that's cool. Like instantly, I like as soon as it was like, no, no, I totally like. I, the, at no point have I been have I been like. She doesn't feel like the Doctor. Hell, she feels more like the Doctor than David Tennant did, to be honest. Um, but yeah, um, I, I've been liking that, but I've only seen a little bit of it. But I just wanted to say that um, having got through the Peter Capaldi run, I think Peter Capaldi might actually be my favourite of the new Doctors, but only only when the writing is backing him up. Okay. Because I really like his take his take on it. Which I heard someone say was basically just an impersonation of Tom Baker. <laughs> and actually, that's not a million miles away, and I'm totally on board for it. And especially his last season where he's got Bill, who I really like Bill as a companion. Yeah, a companion. Bill's cool. Really liked her. And that last season, though it occasionally like dropped the ball and had some stupid overarching story nonsense, because that's the Moffat era in a nutshell... Um, when it was working, I really, really liked it, and there was something about that that just really, it, like, that, the dynamic. Even Nardole, who, when I'd not seen him in the show, I'd just seen, like, clips. I thought I'd find him really annoying, but in the show, I actually quite liked him. So, yeah, that last season of Peter Capaldi's, I'm, like, actually genuinely kind of a little upset that he didn't get at least another season with that kind of setup. Because, obviously, like, Clara was around for, like, fucking, like, four or five seasons, so then to just have Bill, who I, I kind of like a lot better, because, like, even though Clara's not bad or anything, but she was a little bit too competent <laughs> as a companion, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, I think there's got to be an element of companions being a little bit like, oh, my God, what's happening? Why is this happening? Jesus Christ, what is happening? <laughs> like, I think there has to be an element of that. Um, personally, anyway. Cause I, I mean, it's not that, you know, it's bad to have a competent companion, but just... After having the same one for so long, who was yeah, like that, yeah. it was it was a nice kind of change to have Bill, who didn't always know what was going off. Sometimes did the did the wrong thing. Sometimes acted a little bit selfishly or what or what have you. Not in like a bad way, but you know, just in a human way. Uh, I thought that was kind of a nice change of pace, um, and I just genuinely really liked like how she was portrayed. So yeah. Um, Liked like the end of the Capaldi run, uh, and I don't quite get how people were so upset by it when the Matt Smith run was the same kind of writing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess it was the tone is a tad different, but yeah. But yeah, um, so watch for that. That's good. A nice. um, couple of games to mention. Uh, so I played through the entirety of a first run of the Surge Two. Oh, you finished it. Surge yes. Harder. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm playing through New Game Plus which yeah. uh, now, which does have new and different things in it. Like, it has an intro sequence that you play through that isn't in the base game. Okay. Uh, which is kind of cool. Um, but if you don't know, um, The Surge is a Dark Souls-like game um, put out by, oh, was it Deck 13, I think the dev is? And Focus Interactive. Um, and it, it's very similar to the Souls kind of combat, but with subtle kind of differences here and there. Like the big, the big kind of selling point is that it's futuristic, so it's like you're in exosuits, 
and you're slicing bits of your enemies off to get the resources you need. So, like, oh, that person has an arm I really want. Like, that robot arm looks cool. I'm going to cut it off and then I'll get it. I mean, that's, that, is, that is pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> cool. And, and and as you go on, go on, if you've got the thing they've got, then you get the resources to make them. Because that's kind of the big thing. Is you chop the thing off, you get a blueprint for it. And then you need to chop a few arms off to get the right pieces to assemble the arms. Which is pretty, it's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it has kind of big bosses like Dark Souls and the sort of labyrinthine kind of design of levels like, like Dark Souls as well. It, it is a Souls game, you know, Souls-like. Um, the first game I really liked once I got, uh, once I understood how the bosses worked because I really liked the general gameplay loop of how you wander, you know, the, the sort of wandering around exploring, finding shortcuts, and it being primarily humanoid enemies you were fighting against, so you ended up with mo- with you, you sort of being able to understand how to deal with most fights. So it was quite hard for it to be super unfair to you, because it wasn't like they would drop down enormous creations on you that could just flatten you like Dark Souls would occasionally. Which made it a kind of almost relaxing game for me to play. But by the same token, it also kind of... The blocking mechanic feels weird and wrong, so I just learned to dodge everything. So I should really go back and play a Dark Souls game without a shield, because I never did, like, playing through them before this. And, like, now I'm just used to playing them. It's like when I went to play Bloodborne, it was, like, super easy to pick up, because I've been playing a shitload of The Surge. So having to dodge everything was, like, just how I was used to doing it. Um, but yeah, the first game had a pro- had a few problems, namely that the bosses were terrible, <laughs> or they could be f- they were they tended to be fun once you got used to them. But they all had like weird gimmicky things about them, like how they worked that would take you like the first like four or five attempts half the time to figure out what they were about. Like, oh, how do I even hurt this one? Oh, I have to wait till it does this and then stand underneath it. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> um, Whereas this one is a lot less, like, it has a lot more just straight-up boss fights, which is what I wanted from the Surge one, because, like, I just, sometimes you just want to fight a big thing that feels like just a big Dark Souls boss, and the Surge one had, didn't have that many bosses, and uh, Surge 2 doesn't have that many bosses either, but more of them are just straight-up fights, so I, I was kind of grateful of that, because the sort of finicky gimmick boss things just annoyed me a bit. Um... It is weirdly rat mazy though. Like, you, you know Lots how of cheese. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know how like Dark Souls, like especially Dark Souls One, it's one big interconnected world where everything leads back to one another, and like each area is connected by to like half the other areas by like three different means, and so you, there's tons of shortcuts you can you can go through. This is like that. But every level has about 15 shortcuts built into the section as it is. So you end up like, with, there's there's probably about 10 shortcuts in the game that are utterly pointless. Like those happen sometimes in Dark Souls games where you'd like go, like there's one really bad one in Dark Souls 2 where you knock a tree down for a shortcut, but you don't need it because it goes to a fast travel point anyway. So it, it saves you like... 10 seconds and that's it so it's sort of like whatever um there's tons of them in the surge too like there's a shortcut you get for like before the final boss there's a shortcut you unlock that bring uh, that takes you back to the quote unquote bonfire at the start of the area but there is a bonfire at the other end of that shortcut as well so there's literally no point in it other than it being, I mean, I guess it does allow you to get down to the bottom quicker, but there was a shortcut, like, two, like one set of stairs down as well. So it was just like, okay, sure. It's just it's just a bit weird. Like, it's a bit, maybe a bit over the top, but um, I will say if you couldn't quite get into the Surge 1, um, you might like the Surge 2. Because I've okay. heard a few people say that they couldn't quite get on with the first one, like... They didn't hate it, but they just couldn't quite get on with it. But they've enjoyed the Surge two a lot more, mm. and I don't know which. Because I mean, I played the Surge one a shitload. Like I got to, like New Game four or something on that. <laughs> um, so I don't know if it's gonna. I'm I'm gonna be quite as enamored by it. Like if if I'll really want to, but 
it does. I can totally see some people liking this one more. I haven't quite made up my mind yet, uh, but it is good, and I have okay. enjoyed it. And the new game plus stuff is fun because it adds new enemies in, which appear uh, in it. But and yeah, this little intro thing. But the one thing I want to mention, and I will do this as delicately as I can to avoid spoilers, but there are a couple of endings you can get, which basically depend on a decision you make. At least one of those decisions makes a fairly prominent change to the aesthetic of your character. And that aesthetic carries over on into the New Game Plus. And what makes it extra cool is that... You know, I'll just say, because there's no context to what it is at all. You get glowing eyes. Okay. Uh, There's no, like I said, no context to what that means. Because it doesn't... it's, It's a completely new concept that's sprung on you why it happens. But you get glowing eyes, and that carries over on into, into the new game. And what makes it kind of cool is that the game's like lighting engine is kind of good enough that when an item has like a, a lighting effect on it, it does actually properly affect the environment around it. So like if you've got like gauntlets that spark light and things, which some of them do, the lighting does actually go all over your body and stuff, so and, and all over the ground. So it you know looks it makes those lighting effects really integrate within the the thing. I know this isn't like super fancy or anything but you know it's a focus home interactive game and those are sometimes a little janky so <laughs> uh, but the the glowing eyes do really affect the thing around them so like the gear that i'm currently wearing has the this like kind of visor built into it that um kind of sits away from your face but you can see your eyes behind it and so the entire inside of that is all glowing because of it like it actually is interacting off the uh the actual goggles and things you're wearing so it just it it's just looks really cool. It is funny though when people are interacting with you like you're a normal human and you're like, um, <laughs> I'm obviously not. <laughs> um, but yeah, search search two uh, thoroughly enjoyed going through New Game Plus. We'll 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 give a brief report back at some point just to say if New Game Plus continues to be as engaging as it was in the Surge one because it does actually scale like. There are upgrades you can get in New Game Plus that you can't get in the base game of, e- of Surge 1 and Surge 2. So I, I think it's got more legs in New Game Plus than Dark Souls does, which doesn't have as much stuff in New Game Plus. It's more just challenge than mm. anything else. Um, but uh, apart from that, I played one other game briefly. Well, before you move on, just, just oh. a, a last question on that. You mentioned yeah. potentially a little janky earlier. Are all the technical issues with it fixed now? Oh, shit, I completely forgot to mention that. Oh, yeah, so... Because there was a lot. So, yeah, the game is hot, garbage, broken uh, <laughs> when it was released. Um, when uh, the graphical... Uh, I put it up on, on, on Twitter because I don't know if I can fully describe how fucked up it looked. But basically, the game technically would run for me. Like, UI elements were there. I could see the world moving around me. But every texture was glitching out nonsense. <laughs> and most of it was not there. So it was just black, but with, like, I, I could just make out, oh, that's probably a wall, because that's a solid wall of glitching out. <laughs> um, I, I managed to get it working, and and, it, it, and and some people have had problems with the textures just not loading in, so it looks like an Unreal Engine 3 game before the textures pop in, but always looks like that. <laughs> um, it's better now, however, when I... To this day, every time I boot it, I have to boot it twice because the first time it it crashes every time. Yeah. The game is good, but it is, <laughs> and when it is like when it's functioning, it looks fine. Like it looks looks as good as you would expect a game of its kind of tier. Because it's not a full fully fledged AAA game. It's yeah. It's not yeah, yeah. It's not complete. It, I think it's like a mid tier kind of game. But it's. I, I guess that's that is the big thing. I no, thank you for mentioning that because I should have brought that up. But uh, yeah, is, that is the big thing is that it does have some technical issues, and I know for some people it's worse than others. For me, I enjoyed the game enough that the fact that I had to boot it up twice every time <laughs> wasn't a big deal. It never just hard crashed on me, so okay, like yeah. it would just load up and not work, so I had to load it again, and that's just what I had to do with it. Um, because it does seem to be stable enough now that you don't have to, like, install beta fucking NVIDIA patches, which is what I had to do. No fun. um, To get it working originally. But it's fine now. Oh, good. Obviously, apart from the not loading, but... uh, (laughs) Swings and roundabouts. Okay, Um, but you you can move on now. I shall shall permit it. Uh, And I just wanted to briefly mention a game, because I don't know if we'll uh, be able to do anything with it. 
which is a game called Positron X, which we got sent a code for. Um, because I don't know if you know this, but if you if you have a YouTube channel and you've had it for any extended period of time, uh, inevitably you end up getting a, a ton of emails um, sending you codes for games or, or asking you for brand deals for LED light strips yeah, or, yeah. or VPN software, VPNs or fucking phone cases and going, hey, if you do a, a review on your channel, we'll give you a free phone case. It's like, um, no. <laughs> uh, but but you get codes for games as well, and uh, we don't usually accept them because we because normally you have to like ask for them. They'll say, "Hey, do you want a code for this?" And you know we don't say we will because we know we're not going to be able to do anything with them. And it you know, uh, whereas sometimes people will just send you the code, and so we'll generally give them a shot and see if we can do some of them. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, Positron X is a roguelike first person shooter that is trying to be Doom twenty sixteen really hard. As in, whenever you the, the fighting starts, it suddenly gets what feels like a... Very Mick Gordon-y. An off-brand Mick Gordon uh, soundtrack, which I would think was amazing had I not heard the Doom 2016 soundtrack. <laughs> well, I mean, that's yeah. still pretty good. Yeah, it, it's still pretty good. Um, and I just want to bring it up because it's in early access right now. And... It's got all of the be- the bones there to make an actually kind of fun, like, roguelike first-person shooter. Because there's a lot of things that have tried. Like, you've got um, uh, Immortal Redneck. Um, what was that Quake-esque one? Oh, yeah, shit. Um, as, as, oh, wow, fucking hell, what was it called? The one that was... Um, Strafe. Strafe! That was okay. the boy. Okay, yeah. Um, so, uh, but I... a lot, Most of them I've played haven't quite like manage to do what I want them to like this is entirely like a subjective thing not enough waifus <laughs> um, whereas this one feels like it could eventually beco- uh, become it basically you have um, just kind of zones that you go into you you, f- you fight them on you fight the bad people and then you move on to a boss you beat the boss move on and stuff um, as you're going you level up and you gain more permanent buffs to your character that you carry on into each kind of thing as well as picking up temporary things as you go however i have like just a couple of and i know the devs are listening to this because they are very interested in what we have to say (laughs) but i (laughs) sorry (laughs) um but i i just have a couple of things that i want i want them to do which is to one have the levels be bigger because it feels like it wants to have you be bouncing around and shooting shit but the levels are cr- like really cramped, so you end up like you know there's first person shooters like Doom where you bounce around and do shit, and then there's first person shooters like Call of Duty where you run along and you sh- you stop and shoot and then run along and stop and shoot. Oh, that's not fair. Sometimes you crouch and shoot. Yeah, <laughs> like that's not like a statement of what's good or bad. It's just as someone is a fan of like the old Call of Duties can confirm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you know, sometimes if if a game is built around that kind of idea, it's fine. Um, but this does not feel like it's built around that. But it sort of incentivizes that's kind of how you play because the first weapon it gives you and for like qu- like a couple of runs I played, the, the only weapons I got were pistols. Yeah. So you had to be like fairly accurate to shoot, and it's but like shotgun. yeah, it's like if you wanted if you want to do this kind of doom thing, have the base weapon be a shotgun. You just, gotta just do that. Make shotguns weaker if you have to, so that it is a better like starting weapon. But just make the shotguns a base weapon, please, for the love of God, because the because the pistol you start with is so unfun, and I, I genuinely think that it's. If the first weapon that you get in a game isn't fun to use, then it really can like ruin a game for someone because they're not going to bother to try and sit through it anymore. Uh, the painkiller uh, method of doing things, like painkiller's shotgun, is like the most satisfying weapon in the game, and it's the first one you get. So you know, but yeah, I just wanted to say that yeah, cool. Uh, Positron X feels like it could be a cool game. Right now, it's a bit. Eh. But, like, you know when you, you you play an early access game and you can see the possibilities of that it could be something you'd really like? It just isn't that quite yet. So I just wanted to mention it because I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to bring it up again. Um, if you're interested in those sort of things, maybe check it out. I can't remember how much it is. Um, but just know that currently it's not super amazing. But who knows, in time it could become something really good. Or at least something that would scratch the itch. Hmm. But yeah, that's that's all I have to say. 
So I shall now pass over to my comrade. Tavish. Snipe. What have you been up to? Well, um, honestly, it's been a little bit of a rough patch for me again, mental health wise. Oh. Which is a bit sucky, but I've had like the Sims there yeah. to like play, and that yeah. that always makes me happy because I focus on other people's kind of lives. I've been playing so much uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint with Longfang as well. It's been really wonderful because he's like, there's no one I'd rather have in a foxhole than Longfang. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's fantastic. Um, I've watched because it's it's the spoopy month, so I've watched a couple of horror movies slash thrillers that oh. I'd like to talk about. Both of them I like and are good. Shocking! Ooh. You found a Netflix horror that wasn't shit. Two. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm. Yeah. I, I'm not sure I believe you. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna not touch on spoilers because I think these two movies are good and you should go watch them. So, yeah, so what is this? No, no break, but a breakdown of everything. Just these are good, go watch them. Yeah. I'm going to kind of give a bit of a description of like both of them. So yeah. the first one I watched was Level 16, available on Netflix. Now, this one, I was kind of, I was trying to get my Inktobers done and you know a movie is good if I stop drawing to watch it. So I was just like, ah, oh, that's really interesting. So, Level 16 is it's about a bunch of like a group of girls in this special school that is like underground and has no windows and teaches them good feminine qualities like obedience and silence and stuff like that and i'm like shit right. this is like this private school i went to <laughs> that, and look how it fucking... sound like a horror yeah and like, look how helpful that was but yeah um and they have like Russian guards that come in and like they, they watch like these things from the 50s every day that's like, a, a lady must be clean, moisturized, you know, and it's very regimented. And it, it follows kind of like them as they grow up. So like, um, I can't, I don't think it's really ever mentioned, which I actually really like is like when they're put into this school. But they all have levels. And it starts off and they're on like level 13. So they're all like nine years old, maybe. Like little, little, little girls. And they, they line up and take vitamins. And every time they take a vitamin, they have to look into the camera and listen to this guy going, vitamins are, ne- are, are a necessity for healthy growing bodies. They prevent disease and promote like, like health take your vitamin now and then they drink and it, this plays every single fucking time and like the main character is friends with like another character and and that's strongly discouraged and and things start going a bit weird especially when they move up to level 16 which is where they're going to be like they're going to be adopted by their new families and they're all getting excited and and like you know they're doing their chores and stuff and it's like I'm not going to go into spoiler territory but it goes a bit wrong <laughs> and like they start to realize that maybe the people like keeping them there are fucking evil as shit and very sinister and something really gruesome is going on and honestly like the acting was great um, it didn't explain too much. I like a lot of mystery in my horror, which is what yeah. I find makes things a lot more mm. scary. I think when you're dealing with something like that that involves what is a, a grand kind of plan and a conspiracy, getting too much into the weeds about how every single thing works it's, it can just, d- diminish it, from it, a story. You get you lost know. in the details. You, yeah. It's like, it, the more details you have, the easier it is to pick apart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So, like... You sit there and go, well, why did this happen? How how did that get... And, like, it's not explained, but you don't feel like you've been cheated by it. You, it just feels mysterious. It's like, okay, well, how would these characters fucking know? Yeah. There's no way they would know. And, like, they act like kids, too. And, like, there's, there's like, a part where one of the girls gets injured and it, it's, like, a moment where you expect her to be kind of, like, being quite defiant. And she's just sobbing because she's in pain. And I'm like, yeah, that's... That's what someone would do, and it's like, yeah, that's just that's yeah, especially good. a teenager in that kind of position. Yeah, right? yeah, because like, like I think they're about fourteen, fifteen, uh, when they reach level sixteen. But no, that's Does that it not, was... is it not like a, a straight parallel to their age? Did they have to be confusing about it? I don't know, honestly, but it's 
it is very, very good. Um, I thought it was very, very good. Mm. Um, there was also In the Shadow of the Moon, which is on Netflix as well, because that's basically where I get my movies. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I don't have a TV yeah. license. And that was like, that was really interesting. I like, again, not going to spoil much about it. It starts in 1988 uh, with a cop uh, who has a pregnant wife. Now, I always hate the pregnant woman trope so much in horror movies because you immediately go something bad's gonna happen because it's just it's like putting a dog in a video game the dog's gonna die (sighs) yeah it's literally like it's it's it feels cheap to me but i mean to be fair like spoiler alert something bad happens to the pregnant woman i'm I'm just remembering like we say about a dog in a video game dying and i'm like when I was playing through Fable 2 and I was super pissed off about the game because, like, the end of the game sucks super hard. Yeah. And then it gets to the end and it's like, oh, basically everyone that died, you can bring them back or you can bring back your dog. And I'm like, I'm bringing back my fucking dog. And then everyone in the channel starts shouting at you, like, fuck you, this game sucks, I have my dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. But yeah, um, <clears throat> it starts off... Uh, I will say, there's a gross-ass of- gore in this one. Um... So it starts... Asko. No, it's... It, well, I mean, actually, probably. I'll get to that. <laughs> so you're following a guy who's, um, who's, who's a beat cop in Philadelphia. His brother-in-law is, like... He's, like, a detective, and, you know... And he gets called to, like, the place... The scene of, like, a, a, a death... Um, and it, sh- it shows you as it starts up, like a lady bus driver, a guy cooking in a greasy spoon, and some fancy concert pianist just playing a really nice song. And as it goes on, they start getting nosebleeds, and then their ears start bleeding, and then their eyes start bleeding, and then they just fucking collapse. And like it basically, like their brains. To be fair, I've been to some gigs like that as well. Yeah, same. Um, yeah. Like. And their brains start basically leaking out their ears. Their brains just get dissolved and, like, get down to, like, a weird chunky kind of jelly and just kind of... They bleed them out. It's Hmm. fucking gruesome shit. So they're like, this is so weird, you know? And, like, they, um... They're, like, wandering around and trying to figure out, like, what the hell could have caused that. And, like, they notice there's three pricks on the back of their necks. And they're like, huh... Okay, that's that's the um, that's the correlation we've got. That's all we've got to go on. Otherwise, the victims seem to be random. He gets a call from um, another beat cop. It's like, oh yeah, no, we found another victim with the three dots. And they're like, oh, he's like, oh shit, you know. Well, <sighs> is she bleeding from everywhere? And he's like, what? No, she's still alive. So they're like, oh fuck, and they get there, and she's just a lady who was dancing in the club. Mm. And she's like hysterical, and she's like, "Oh, she's she this this woman." She and they're like, "Okay, wait, a woman?" It's like, "Yeah, this woman like she stabbed me in like in in the back of my neck and just ran off, and she was like super strong and everything, and oh my god, she was wearing like a blue hoodie and stuff." And then like the girl is a bit racist. She's and the guy's like, "Okay, well, what does she look like?" And she's like, "Well, she didn't belong here, that's for sure. She was black." And it's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Don't Suddenly feel bad you're about to die. <laughs> I actually feel pretty okay about it. And then she dies. And they're like, fuck, we're looking for a female serial killer. Which, anyone knows anything about serial killers, female serial killers are incredibly rare, especially with that, like, m- more of a physical kind of thing. Mm. Just is as the pattern goes. Um, so they're like, fuck, okay. So, you know, they're looking around town. And they come out, they drive out from an alleyway, this cop and his partner, and they basically nearly hit the suspect. And she's staring him down, and so he gets out and he chases it all the way through the subway. And, she, you know, like, from the description the lady gave um, the cop, it's like, oh yeah, she had like a, she had like a bullet wound in her arm. She, like, you know, she was bleeding, uh, you know, black lady, blue hoodie and stuff. So it chases her down, and she basically gets the jump on him and she's like oh um congratulations on your baby girl and he's like what and he and she's like also i'm sorry about your partner and he's like okay fucking what and they have a scuffle 
And then, yeah, afterwards he gets the call. So, oh, yeah, you, you, your wife's gone into labor. We've been trying to message you. And she, he's like, oh, fuck. So he runs to the hospital. And, of course, like, she dies. Spoilers. The pregnant woman in a horror movie dies. And then, yeah, and then it cuts to, like, you know, and they can't find the suspect anywhere. And, like, it cuts to nine years later. And the same kind of killings start happening again. This, this is one that's more of a thriller, really. Yes, this yeah. is more yeah. of a thriller. And honestly, I'm not going to go any further, but that was, it was really good. I thought it was really entertaining. My only problem was the, um, the, they tried to age the guy, uh, the, the main cop guy, by like giving him like crappy hair and a crappy beard, but it just looks like stuck on. <laughs> it's like my only problem. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's really cool about a cop like chasing a serial killer and it's it's really interesting and I like it a lot. So mm. yeah, can recommend that. Uh, oh, played some Untitled Goose Game. Nice. Completed it, in fact. Yeah, we played through the whole thing on stream. It was so oh, good. Nice. Completed the main story or have you gone back and done all the extra bits? Uh, we completed just the main everything. Story. Okay, we, yeah. we did the main story. We did do quite a few of the extra ones as yeah. well on the end of yeah. the stream because it doesn't tell. Obviously, the game only takes like two hours to beat. So. Yeah. But, oh my goodness, that was just such a great little devilment game. Oh, it's fun. Untitled Goose Game is a very good game. I I, I, I feel that it, it manages to to completely like encapsulate what is inherently fun about messing with stealth games, but puts them in the world's most forgiving stealth game. Yeah. Because if you get caught, mm. it doesn't matter. Yeah. It yeah, just yeah. it just inconveniences yeah. you. But it allows you to do the things that's like in a stealth game, because I'm not very good at them, um, but messing with the AI, getting it to do weird things, <laughs> uh, getting getting what you want out of a situation by screwing with the AI. Or just being a dick to it. Or just being a just being elaborately a dick. I'm on the Untitled Goose Game subreddit and the stuff those people do is hilarious. It's <laughs> like there's pictures of like I threw every collect everything you can pick up in the game in the well. <laughs> yeah. Like why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just cuz or they make cute little picnics with the with the other goose like figurine. <laughs> that's that's Aww. super cute. But yeah, because it, I I think it does it, it does allow a lot of people to enjoy a stealth game. But in this kind of light-hearted and easy to deal with kind of situation, it's good for kids because, like, we like us three got it for um, Ash and Sarah. Yeah, yeah. And their their little one's been playing it. <laughs> she she likes being the uh, the angry goose. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think it's a very it's a very cool little game. I, I do too. It it managed to it it lived up to the hype. I feel, yeah, I was about to was... say there's not many games that get this mm. much sort of attention and are actually good. I think because it like the trailers just showed exactly what it is, and then you mm. play it, and it's exactly that. It's that so yeah. if you were excited by the trailer, then the game is just that. I remember seeing it like literally watching it with Drama Matt and you like years ago, and the moment he pops out, like the, the goose pops out, and he goes. Mark. Just being like, I love this game. It's just I inherently love this funny game. somehow. I don't. It is. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why. I also like how. Also, f- everyone kind of run like when they've been caught or are running away. Everyone puts their wings out in a kind of like ha ha strutting kind of way. Yeah, I, I, I like, like how everyone does it. It's yeah. so pointless. Like the wings barely do anything do. in the game. Yeah. There's like one one like little puzzle you need for them for, but like anything else they're useless. Yeah, I can't actually but think. But you of, always, yeah. I, I always walk around with them out. Like, yeah, I stole your fucking pipe. What are you gonna do? Vote yeah. Brexit again? Mm. <laughs> like after you've screwed with someone, you can't help but walk up to them or like when someone spots you doing something, you just throw your wings out. Like what? It's like fucking <laughs> come at me it's so fucking you, satisfying you it, it is just a fantastic little thing that is designed for I, I think you know what it is it's like everything in that is designed to make the core conceit more fun even if it doesn't actually serve much of a purpose mm-hmm. so just the general the general kind of way that people don't even get really angry with you they just get mildly annoyed with you y- you are an <laughs> inconvenience yeah you inconvenience people on a grand scale and there's just this kind of petulant energy radiating this this mischievous energy radiating from the goose that's it's fantastic uh, <laughs> The goose, the go- uh, goose for Smash, honestly. Like, honestly, goose for Smash. Go- goose needs to be in Smash. With us. I kind yeah. of want a, like an Untitled Goose game, goose tattoo. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was just like peace was never an option. <laughs> or something. <laughs> the photoshops have been beautiful. Or do what you must, I have already won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that could be like the the energy of the game is do what you must like have already won. It really is. It's got such a good kind of like cheeky energy to it. It's and um, from what you said last time, Matt, I one hundred percent agree with the the little story that's there is immensely satisfying. Oh, it's mm. thoroughly satisfying. Yeah, like it's just a tiny little thing. But yeah, yeah, the yeah. fact that it didn't have to be there, but the fact it was there helps contextualize everything you've been doing and <laughs> makes the whole thing seem way funnier. Yeah, when you yeah, realize right. the reason for everything is <laughs> such a petty, <laughs> unnecessary thing. It's perfect. <laughs> it's it is great. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, we've, we've talked, we've yeah. talked a, little, a bit more about it. It's got so many good things to say. But speaking of story that didn't have to be there, last game I played is genital jousting. You mean that thing we're not allowed to play on Switch? We are not, because let's face it, it yeah. is a bunch of penises with buttholes on them. You can play FIFA, and that's basically that. Yeah, but it's like you can't <laughs> see their wieners. Anyway, <laughs> did you know that General Jousting has a story mode? I did not. No. I, pl- I completed the story mode. Okay. It's it's narrated by this this lady, and it's it's actually pretty good. <laughs> so you wake up. You are a penis called John. I'm getting Thomas was alone vibes there, here. It's basically that, but filthy. Okay. Because <laughs> like you press like it's like press Thomas B. Thomas was a chode. Yeah. It's like <laughs> press B to pay the bartender, and you just start spaffing at them, but you spaff no. money. <laughs> okay, right. Good. It's like there's an there's an interesting story there, and I'm not going to spoil a lot of it because it's. It needs to be seen to be believed, honestly. I mean, that's genital jousting as a general thing, anyway. You have to see it to believe it. Yeah, but the baseline of the story is, you wake, like, you are John the Peen. Should probably give a vague overview of genital jousting if someone hasn't experienced this game. Genital jousting is a devolver digital game. Do I need to continue? (laughs) This is a real game that really exists. You play 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 as, as, like, a sentient penis that has has a a butthole. butthole in between the testicles. Yes. And... Oh, it's basically predominantly a multiplayer game where you have to put the end of your penis into other people's buttholes. Yes. While keeping your butthole unperforated. You, you must protect your butthole from the the penises. Yes. It is a thing that exists and we all have to deal also, with it. Also, the foley in it is disgusting. Oh, yeah, I bet. It is just like... Oh. It's so Can we not? moist and squelchy. It's like... Because like, your, your, your penis... Is having like anxiety dreams about its <laughs> high school reunion, where it just goes up. It's naked at school, which means because yeah, the penises have clothes on. By the way, they have like little ties, and sometimes they have glasses. <laughs> and and oh, like you go to school, and then there's these three bullies that bully you, and one of them's a punk penis who has a Prince Albert piercing. <laughs> <laughs> and like a spiked dog collar around the shaft. Of course. And they just get really long and start like smothering you like something out of fucking Akira. <laughs> and then you wake up and it goes, John woke up in a hefty sweat, stiff as a board, as was usual. It's like, there are so many <laughs> ooer jokes. <laughs> yeah. So like, he went to the gym to try and get hard. It's like, yeah, it's because I'm a dick. Also, at one point you wake up and there's a swan in your bathroom. Okay. Because you wake up and the narrator's like, John, why is the bathroom door barricaded? And you open it and it's just a (laughs) swan that just goes for you immediately. You're like, oh no, that's why. (laughs) And like, and like, the thing is, the story is that the penis called John is basically an incel who hates women. Okay. And he's like, okay, I need to make money, travel, look hot get girlfriend so that if I, I'll, I'll get a girlfriend so that everyone will be like no one will think I'm a loser at the high school reunion so everything he does is like trying to get a girl peen to be like into him and like it is it is funny but then it's kind of like actually that is genuinely kind of saying something where it's like he orders pizza and the delivery driver is a lady and he's like oh I know she's into me 
So he like sets up mm. with wine and roses and fancy music and get goes out and spends loads of money on stuff. And then like invites her in after she'd like just just bring him a pizza. Like she, he hasn't asked her on a date or anything. It's just he's ordered a pizza and invited her into his home for a date. That's and not she's so like, much a date as how a murder starts. Yeah. So mm. you know the the lady penis runs off and it's like <laughs> he just keeps doing that and just like basically going oh why can't I get a girlfriend oh what's wrong with the world and no one has a sense of humor I'm like I am literally playing as a dick <laughs> with a butthole between its butt cheeks like literally it's ball cheeks it's ball cheeks <laughs> like one of the first things you've got to do is you go to work because you're late for work you got to brush your teeth which is horrifying <laughs> oh, oh yeah. god I've got, I've got an image now it's literally because you, you like you can spit you can choose what part of the dick you pick things up with. So either it's like the urethra or the butthole at the back. So you go from like the tip to the ball to, to the balls. And like the ball, like the, the butthole is basically where they eat, store things and have teeth. And like the, the, uh, the urethra is where like when they talk, they just spew out liquid. <laughs> you know, I, I was not expecting the deep lore of genital <laughs> jousting. And yet here we are. And yet here we are. But no, and like you, you can you choose clothes and he goes out in like like a, a popped collar, like polo neck, like a uh, polo shirt with like a fucking cap on the end of his <laughs> wiener. And yeah, it's just it's also there's one where it's like you, there's an objective where you have to go to the bar bathroom before you pee yourself. And like <sighs> There's like you can see in the stalls because of how it is, and there's like a businessman penis, and then there's like a barfly penis, who are just like slorping in and out of each other's butts, and one of them's got a cigarette in in the pee hole, <laughs> and then there's another one just kind of like snorting cocaine through up the urethra on the toilet scene. It's like what the fuck? I mean, th- I was thoroughly entertained. Mainly because every few minutes I stop and go, Jesus fucking Christ, what? Uh, you know, now you said this. <laughs> like, there's like, there's like, like, there's like birds and worms, like worms pop out of the earth and it's just a dick. I, I think I'm just going to have to play through this myself. You need I, to, it's so fucking weird. Because I know you're not making this up, but every part <laughs> of it sounds like some fever dream you had. <laughs> I know! It's so weird. I had no idea this story mode existed. Me neither, because I was just going to be like, oh, I'll play a bit of multiplayer. I was like, story mode? Yeah, go on. <laughs> and then, yeah, I, it was. it's like an hour and a half, maybe two hours long, and I was just sat there the whole time going, what the fuck? And it's got, like, a good moral to it and everything. <laughs> and, like, there's, oh, a, there's like... Yeah. There are two kinds of people, those that play on Title Goose Game and those that play the story mode of genital jousting. I am both of those people. <laughs> But yeah, um, that's pretty much all I've been up okay. to. <laughs> I can see why that would... I mean, that's going to take a while because, of course, it only takes a little bit to play, but you're going to have to spend like a few days afterwards just processing yeah. that. Also, I will say, I'll give you a bit of a spoiler, but not. Re- but it's not really... There is an option, like, because you get objectives to do. Yeah. And one of them is you uh, like after you do your work, you go into the uh, the break room, and you have to quote soothe asshole, and quote apply band aid to your butthole. Right. And then the boss comes in and starts jizzing everywhere, but which is how they talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just play it. Yeah. It's so weird. Uh, nah, yeah, that's all I've been doing <laughs> that I want to talk about. Imagine what I don't want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> if, if this is what what we're doing today, yeah, 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 that's pretty much all I've been up to. Um, drummer Matt, hello. What have you been up to, friend? I, as previously mentioned earlier, have started a new job. Which, I mean, yay job, I guess. But it means I have dramatically less time for video games. <laughs> I, that's, I think that's most people's complaints, really. Yeah, I've, I've been getting home from work, and I still, I'm still run training, because I was doing that when I had lots of free time, but there's like a bit of an overlap, so I'm getting home and having to go for a run, and then getting home from that and being like, okay, it might be 8 o'clock in the evening, but it's bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> but I've done a few things. But that so, does mean that you can have like a chocolate bar a day. 
It it did, yeah. I do not condone eating chocolate bars every day, but if you have like one hell of a walkout workout or run like thirty two K in one go like Drama Matt frequently does, you're allowed a fucking chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um but I have done a few things. So um I've played a game. Oh. It is a kind of because there's the games I've been playing at the moment because I've got to get them on my laptop and my laptop doesn't have a graphics card that somewhat limits which games on it I can play yeah you can play like old text adventure shit I guess. Um, yeah I know I'm kind of tempted to at some point but I haven't fallen down that rabbit hole quite yet but I'd I say played... keep a um, what's the word keep a uh, a strategy guide there open just in case because you'll need it because that shit is, was yeah. dire even at the time <laughs> yeah but the game I played this time is a game called Old Man's Journey Oh, and I've I have no that. idea where I got it from. It was presumably in a humble bundle, I guess. I have no idea. That's usually how mystery games pop yeah. up in your uh, Steam mm-hmm. library. Yeah, but it's like you play as a old man, and it's a cartoon, animated sort of style. Not unlike Goose Game, actually, in terms of it's like it looks not really the same, but it looks hand sort of hand drawn, hand animated ish. So it's not exactly the same, but it's got that similar sort of feeling. Um, and it's sort of, it's a, you're just an old dude. And for whatever reason, you pack up like an old, like, you pack up a rucksack and you just go on an adventure. And it's sort of a, it's not quite a walking simulator because it's like a 2D and there is puzzles and things. But I don't know, so far, it's just, I've only played for about an hour. And I think it's only, I'm about halfway through according to the, like, you know, the, the chapters you can see at the start. And you mm. just... It's drawn, it's like sort of a side perspective in like, imagine like a landscape painting or more accurately, a draw a, a drawing of a landscape you did as a kid. So you know where you've got hills that are sort of basically domes and they sort of overlap each other? Yeah. I used to, um, it does that, but then the, the old guy can like jump from one hill to the other when the like line of them touches, even though one's like, you know, in the foreground, one's in the background. And then you can, like, use your mouse to, like, drag the hills up and down. So then you can, like, complete the path. Oh, okay. And that's about the extent of the gameplay. And then you just have to, like, you just get a bit further on. And he just has a bit of a memory. He sits and is like, oh, let's think about this thing. And it's slowly, like, giving you a bit of a story. But I don't know. There's not much to it. But it's just quite pretty and just quite pleasant. It does sound pretty chill. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just really nice and chilled out. And, yeah, we'll see where the, where the story goes. But there's no, it's another one with no dialogue. Um, it's just the only bit of story is you see like an image from his memory but you don't get any words explaining what it is you're sort of slowly picking up oh, okay it's sort of about his wife and his kids and his family and presumably something horrific is going to happen or I, I don't know <laughs> but, yeah it's just quite a sweet little yeah the goose is going to come in and just fucking take his, take <laughs> oh, his yeah. soul <laughs> yeah, just, I guess yeah. it's better than the fucking sentient penis with a butthole oh yeah just comes in, in just spats yeah, it's money way all over more, him. it's way less highbrow less, less, wait less lowbrow than the yeah. no no thing. I think you're right the first time <laughs> yeah, <probably. laughs> and yeah it's just it's quite pleasant and it's just yeah Oh, I don't have much else to say about it, but I, I'm quite enjoying it so far. And presumably, I got it for quite cheap. Um, <laughs> presumably, the main thing I was going to talk about is that I have seen Joker. Ah, yes. So I have oh. thoughts, but I haven't. So I've managed to. Be- like... Before Sorry. you say anything, I've managed to not really read much about it online because I assume online everyone either loves it or hates it for all of the opposite reasons and horrible reasons for both sides. I imagine because yeah. it's one of those films yeah. that I'm fully expecting it just to be so very toxic and horrible so i've kind of avoided anything online about it that it's, is it's, it's a very good idea to do that because yeah. i've seen some bullshit Let, let's just say a lot of stuff was said about the movie before it came out that would be a fine critique had the movie actually come out and people seen it but uh... i mean i don't want to see it because i don't like the Joker is the the protagonist. I just mm. he's he should be a mystery. He should be in the background as being a fucking weirdo. Mm. And I I like that. And I have some you know, gamers rise up kind of feelings about it. And we living us living in a society <laughs> and all that kind of shit. So it's a bit mm. like. Eh. But Matt. But the you, movie. You you tell us about the actual movie. Yeah, tell us about the actual yeah. movie. Um. So overall, I enjoyed it and I thought it was good. Is my sort of broad feelings okay um in general 
There's a few... So, yeah, it's very tiring to watch. Like, the whole way through, you're sort of sat on edge. And it's set in, like, early 80s Gotham, which is sort of like, I think, late 70s New York, where basically everything is shit. And yeah. there's no money yeah. for anything apart from, like, business people who have all of it. Yep. Overall, it's a very, very good advert for why you so- shouldn't cut social, like, services and programs and welfare and things like that. It, because that's basically, it's just a two and a half a- hour advert for why we should be nicer to people who are lef- less well off, in essence. <laughs> Which, so, <laughs> so that's quite a good moral from it, because that's, it's very oh, much thoroughly, like, yeah. this, is, this is terrible, this wouldn't have happened if the government was more competent and less nasty. So hmm. I was like, well, that's quite a good model. Yeah, actually. I'm um, quite impressed with that. But it is also borderline sort of... Because as much as Joker as a character, obviously like, these things happen to him and he's not well and he sort of gets shat on and shat on and things taken away and things happen through none of which is his fault, but then he ends up doing bad things and it's sort of... I'm a little bit, so my hesitations for it is I'm a little bit concerned it sort of glorifies what he ends up doing a little bit too much, maybe, or it doesn't, but you could definitely see it that way if you wanted to, if that mm. makes sense. It, it so would could, be a valid reading to yeah, see Yeah, you like could that sort of sort watch of what he's done and, you know, he obviously goes off and does Joker, supervillain-esque things and whatnot, and just does things that are bad, and it's sort of like, well... He, he should be doing these because he's been treated so badly he sort of deserves to get his revenge and all that. Well, I could understand why he's doing these things, and, but it's not, doesn't make them good things to do. Yeah. So I think there's a fine line and it's sort of like if you were sort of, yeah, if, if you wanted to read it another way, you definitely could use it as sort of say it was glorifying these things. And I'm not saying it's not. For me, it was like, actually, I'm watching this and thinking oh, this is an advert for how shit things can get and why we need to have social programs to help people like this. But, yeah. The other thing that I'm slightly hesitant on before I, like, go full recommendation on it is that because it's a film dealing with people who are have various, um, like, mental issues for various mental reasons. Mental illnesses. Mental illnesses and things for various reasons. I'd want to get someone's opinion or read about someone's opinion who is like, you know, qualified in that sort of area just to see if it's sort of representing those people fairly. If mm. that makes sense, because I, I don't think it. I don't yeah. think it isn't. and I think it's OK, but I'm not qualified enough to say whether it's actually doing a fair representation of people or not. So mm. I, w- I am intrigued just to sort of hear from someone who's, you know, a bit more qualified than me <laughs> to, to talk about these things just to yeah. see like, OK, well, let's just just just, just check that, you know. We're all sort of above board and it's not being <laughs> too unfair or too judgy or too anything. You know, you know I, I, I can't quite work out what I'm trying to say. But You don't, don't want it yeah. to demonise and misportray no, exactly, the mentally yeah. ill. And I don't think it does. I think it actually just shows why people need support and why it's important. Hmm. But it, it does it? sound a little like uh, what we were talking about last, last episode about how... Um, it can be so like with um, the Ghost Recon series of that it can be tricky when you portray people who are, in that case, um, you know, doing some shady shit and again with the Joker doing bad things. But when they are the protagonists of a story, it's a difficult line to walk to between mm. telling their story and uh, giving, uh, you know, glamorizing the bad yeah. things yeah, that yeah, they're yeah. doing. And it's yeah. it's a it's a hard line to to walk. And it's you know it's the same kind of thing you end up with with Warhammer, you know, because the, mm. the Imperium is hellish. And yeah, some yeah. people who don't know what satire is see it and go, um, well, this is this is a good thing. They're, they're doing the right thing. And it's like, they're, they're not. And you're not supposed to think that. But it's difficult to portray that. And I, I can see why that... Yeah, it's a, sim- it's a similar sort of... I mean, it's not. Because, yeah, because from what I've I've seen people talking about it, that is actually a, a, a the thing of people saying that there are there are people who like the people I follow have seen it basically how you you've taken it, Matt, as being mm. it's like well it it says this guy did bad things and the he was the one of the reasons why the bad things he did these bad things is because he didn't get any of the support and the bad things wouldn't have happened if he had got the support mm. that he needed um, without saying that he did anything right yeah 
Yeah. However, other people have taken it to be that. Like it's it's um, different things to different people. Which I guess all art is ultimately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, but but you know this is obviously it's this been... is such a fine line between the two. I think yeah, is, um, yeah. I mean, I can't. I, do, I I personally do want to see it at some point. I probably won't bother. To yeah, it's to the cinema, good. I wouldn't I, say yeah. it's. It yeah, it's not a light-hearted, enjoyable rom. <laughs> no, but it has um, a clown in it. <laughs> but I would say oh. I I I I. I'm glad I saw it, and I mm. did think it was good. With the you know caveats that I've already mentioned. Yeah. Um, I'm not really going to go through plot things because. You know, people. I think people should just watch it if they want to know. Really, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's fair. It's not it's like spoilers. It's not like spo- it's not like spoilers would ruin it. But I don't want to spoil it in case. Do you know it, some people? Do you know would that the Joker it. does crimes? <gasps> Did you know that Bruce that... Willis was a ghost the whole time in it? Oh, yeah. What I will say is, um... <laughs> <laughs> that was the sound of a sandbag <laughs> dropping. <Yeah. laughs> it, do, it does do something that's quite interesting. It's so it's because on all in a in like you know. Batman media and Batman franchise things. You sort of see him as grown up, and he's he's like Thomas Wayne. His dad is sorry, spoilers. Bruce Wayne is Batman. Apologies. Um, <gasps> <Yeah>. Fuck, <laughs> I don't, oh, dude. Um, I haven't got that far through Gotham. Like, you'll be telling me that like Clark Kent Superman next. They don't look anything alike. One well, wears glasses. Yeah, I know, right? Um, um, Thomas Wade is always painted as this sort of because they're mostly set when Batman is around so it's after Thomas Wayne has died again spoilers but not Mm. Um, (laughs) he's sort of seen as this you know like light like figure of light in the city who did like all these good social stuff and helped people this definitely views Thomas Wayne in a different manner which is really it's sort of because you only ever see him sort of through Batman's eyes and Bruce, yeah. Bruce has had like obviously this somewhat biased image of his parents because they're his parents and he was a kid when he knew them so he's obviously like you know in adoration and loves his parents so you sort of see it through his eyes a bit and sort of this gives a definitely like a different take and I don't there's probably some other there's probably a comic series or something which <laughs> I yeah don't yeah. haven't read that that sees him this way but yeah it sort of sees thomas in like a, a, a quite a different light to this sort of good doing well-meaning ph- philanthropist basically which it is quite portrays is, him as a more realistic rich person as a, i mean yes. yeah in in essence yeah <laughs> yeah but it's quite interesting to see that cuz like in a, at least in the sort of mainstream films and cartoons and things that i've seen he isn't seen in that way at all which was quite interesting hmm no, that's that's cool because yeah, that's not something I would have expected from that. And that's yeah, cool. yeah. So because I was a bit when he started being in it, and I was like, oh, he's just going to put like Bruce in it just because then they can like link it because it it really it it doesn't need it doesn't need to be at all related to you know Batman and Gotham and Joker. It could just be a completely it could be separate. the venom of the DC universe. Yeah, it, it could be completely separate. Or it could even be like it's not even you know the same character basically. It could be a completely separate, unconnected thing, and I think it'd be a. It doesn't necessarily take anything away, but for, by being Joker and set in Gotham and things, but it doesn't need to have any connection. So when they started bringing up the Waynes and things, I was a bit like, "Oh, are they just doing this just to sort of make people like it more?" Because it's got you know, they're like, "Oh, it's Bruce Wayne there, oh, cool." But no, it doesn't go too far that way, and yeah, it's an interesting take on the family. So I enjoyed hmm. it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't have many more thoughts, to be honest, but I still don't dare go on the internet and read what people are saying about it. <laughs> that's probably for the best. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, so that's that's me me done, I'm afraid. Um, okay. Apart from actually, I guess I'll say, we have played some sessions of D&D. We have. We've played a bunch of small sessions of it, so we're going to try our best to um, put across what has happened so, uh, because it's been a little while since we've talked about it, we'll just give it a general overview of the characters we're all playing as. So, we're currently uh, playing through a campaign with our with the same group that we played through the old um, campaign with. I am playing a tiefling ranger called Samuel Sylvain. I am playing a um, human fighter called Junior. I am playing a half-elf paladin called Hela. And we also have Sarah, the the other player who is not 
on the podcast, uh, <laughs> who is playing a... Is she a full elf or a half elf? She's a full elf. Yeah. You yeah. ask every time. I know, every she's time. She's like 250 forget. years old. Yeah, a, a full elf <laughs> druid called Beltan. We had, the last time we... The last we left our heroes and all that, um, we, we had just dealt with a, an attack on the city that we're currently in uh, by a... Basically, a huge gang of racists called the Legion. Yep. And then a dragon came and shouted at them and fucked off immediately. Yeah. So um, we've been asked to basically go and check out what's been going on um, vis-a-vis the mines in the city because the gold just all disappeared and the city's kind of fallen apart because they can't dig anything up from the mines. Nothing of value. Um, so we were asked to go and check that out. So um, whilst we were waiting for basically the day to roll around because we had um, sort of chatted with some miners who gave us a bit of an overview of uh, of what's you know the stuff disappeared and that you know maybe go check out this temple uh, yeah they were saying they they used to pray to a, uh, a a goddess of like mining and and like stuff called ula and they just stopped praying and yeah just stopped giving a damn so um Bef- we were set to go out and go and check the temple but before we did uh myself and junior uh, went to go and check out the library because both of us are trying to find out things from there. So uh, we basically had a session where everyone else had to be bored. Where um... <laughs> Beltan and I just got drunk in the pub. Yeah, um, but and we talked went... about how like Junior is obviously in love with Hella. That is kind of embarrassing, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we go to we go to the library. We open the door and then get shot by a crossbow. Uh, because it turns out that the uh, librarian had, in fact, paid attention when uh, I, I said that the person who had been to the library previously is someone to fucking watch out for because they are the life bringer who is the big bad that my character is trying to find. So they set up a bunch of crossbows, and I got shot entering the public library. <laughs> well, I mean, at least he listened to you. <laughs> yeah, at least he, he listened to me. He wouldn't give me the fucking time of day. Um... But uh, so just to kind of cover, uh, you know, kind of quickly go over what happened on that, that kind of thing is I, I basically found out that uh, the Lifebringer is connected and is indeed a high up in this legion, this group of people who are human supremacists, basically, um, and have been causing a whole heap of ruckus. And he's he's high up in there. So it basically connects my overarching thing with the legion and um you're also trying to find out stuff in the library as well, aren't you? Aren't you, Matthew, as junior? Yes. Um, so I think I can say this because I think the or your characters all know this, but in essence, junior is he's from a magical family. Both of his parents are like majors and te- teachers of magic, um, and all of his siblings are magical and they all picked it up really easily. Junior picked up like a spell and a couple of cantrips like quite early on, and then just couldn't. Just didn't learn any more magic. It just wouldn't happen. Um, so he's the re- reason he left home when he was like nineteen, and he's been travelling for the last twenty odd years is to try and find out if there's any reason that he can't do it before he goes. Before he sort of goes home and so, sort of says, you know, oh, it, I wasn't just being shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's definitely got to the point where he wasn't expecting to find anything. But he found a book in the library. Which connects why he can't do magic potentially to this legion. So mm. everything sort of ties together quite nicely. There's some sort of blood curse that was put onto his family because his grandma fought Bethra, who is apparently the ultimate evil. And Bethra is who started the legion or was involved yeah. in the legion, or there's some connection to the legion there. So yeah, Junior's quite intrigued just to stick around and find out more now, which is quite helpful because that's what we seem to be doing as a party. Yeah, yeah, uh, because we've all sort of been put, you know, pushed down this path of dealing with with the Legion that, like, initially seemed to be nothing really connected to us specifically. Um, Because, yeah, I don't know if I've gone into this, but, uh, yeah, the reason why my character is after this necromancer known as the Lifebringer is because basically his hometown, uh, um, because all the character, the party all knows this now, so I can talk about it. Uh, My character is the adopted son of a lord in a far off land um who were or, you know human uh, he has human parents yeah. as it were in Wallachia. Um, 
Yeah, basically, because he's he's, <laughs> yeah. he, he's um, Trevor Belmont. Basically, um, I mean, he fights like him, but he isn't. Yeah, no. Um, but uh, he, his thing was attacked by basically an undead menace led by a necromancer who goes by the self-aggrandizing title of the Lifebringer. Um, and he's been searching for him and following his kind of path of destruction for like a decade. Uh, has occasionally got kind of close to him, but has never been able to like take him down because that's the reason why he's trained as he is and he's become what he is, is because he wants to kill this one fucker, basically. <laughs> um, so, uh, and we found out, yeah, he he tried to get in the library. And so I went into the library to try and search through the books to find if there's anything that I could tell that he was specifically after. And yeah, I couldn't find that, but I did find out because this is a huge library. I managed to find out some information of his actual connections, which I hadn't previously been able to find out. So I was like, okay, so that's cool. Um, so we then went back and uh, we all went to go to this temple of the god. Uh, what was the god's name? Ula. Ula, the, the god Ula, who's was like the. Lo- I think I made the thing of like you're going to pray for oolong time. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I didn't get killed immediately. I was quite impressed. But yeah, as her being like the local local god, we went into the temple and we there was like kind of a ritual that we, we kind of could find that we had to set up. So we set up the ritual. I started praying and and just spitball and be like, Hey, what's up? Hella here. Probably don't know me. I'm new in town. Blah, blah, blah. And then just the god appears. Yeah, just a literal god appears in front of us. And I, I guess because of the general nature of the characters, like... None of us are particularly impressed. We're sort of nonplussed by it. Like, okay, there's a, there's well, a god oh, there. Oh, hi, I like your hair and beard. They're very pretty. Because, like, Hella would just talk normally to anybody anyway. Yeah. <laughs> normally for Hella. Um, <laughs> you can't help those little digs, can you? <laughs> Hella does not behave like a normal person. No, she's a half-elf. She doesn't behave like a normal half elf. She has no filter. She does have some filter. Just oh not God. Very... What is she thinking if if she says what we hear? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. She's the life bringer. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and and my character Samuel is whilst my my character is not religious, has been around necromancy enough and undead nonsense to sort of go. Y- you know what? There is definitely gods in this world, but like sort of sees in this very kind of pragmatic way of, like, they're mm. just a fixture of the universe and, like, you believing or not believing in them, who gives a shit, like... Which is, actually, we found out, belief bestows power. And because, like, everyone stopped praying to Ula, she stopped basically Have... being able to protect the mines. Yes. And she's very she was very offended because something had moved into the mines and had made her very cross because she couldn't really deal with it she doesn't have the power to do anything about Mm. it anymore so um to help the town out we're like okay well we'll go down into the mines let's go put the fear of god into the uh the miners we spoke to which we did yeah so that was really (laughs) funny we came back it's like hey so yeah we spoke to your god and they're all like i'm they all stopped drinking they're like i'm sorry what so yeah no she's not happy oh you pissed her off and they're like oh fuck really shit Oh, because we bump into Dennis, the guy that Beltan and I helped. Yeah. And he, like, goes and rallies all the miners to go and aggressively pray at the altar. <laughs> like, while we're gone. Like, she's like sh- shit, okay, God's angry with us, we should probably do something about that. Yeah. So, um, so they go off that, and we go, to, we go get some supplies and stuff. And we put them in Nibbly. And put them in Nibbly, our bag of holding that is not the luggage from Discord, shut up. No. Um... <laughs> And He's we, a very good boy, though. We approach the shaft. The natural shaft. The natural shaft, which is a large entry to the mines that is sort of in the centre of the uh, the city that was like a natural kind of inlet to it that was expanded yeah. over time. There's like a lift there, but apparently it was like a bit fucky. So the, like, we go up, there's, f- f- there's like four levers there. So obviously Hella goes up and just starts yanking all of them immediately. Much to everyone just going, no, no, don't. Don't yank that. And then Beltan and I just pull them all at once and the, the lift comes up and we're like, ha, <laughs> told you so. Uh, so yeah, we all go down on this enormous lift that takes an ungodly amount of it time. It takes like 30 minutes to reach the bottom. It- oh, the, the, before we went down, um, the, the voice in the sky that is God um, did point out that after we got on the lift, 
there was a lot of signs around saying it needs four people to pull the levers to do it as a safety <laughs> thing. There's lots of signs saying that around and we just hadn't bothered looking around. We just spent a bit of time cocking about with the levers. Which is D&D condensed, <laughs> yeah. let's yeah, be honest. It's, it's, the, it's trying to pick up an unlocked door. That's what D&D <laughs> Which is. Which our party in. never did. No. Except for that one time it totally happened. Shut up. <laughs> um, so Everyone yeah. has a similar story. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every- Everyone's tried to do, go go this elaborate thing of fixing something that you just had to open a door. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, but so we go down and we end up in the the mines and we we set off and you know try and go deeper into the mines. Um, eventually, we come across a very 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 large area that's got like an underground forest. Yeah, because like which is really funny as well because Junior is the only person who doesn't have night vision. Yeah. So Hela's like dragging him along. This is like you in the previous campaign where Nathan was the only person who didn't have dark vision. Uh, Now I know how like it's really funny because I I have dark vision now so I can like mock Matt all day long. (laughs) So it's fun. But yeah, we we get down there. And there's all this kind of like bioluminescent sort of stuff in there, so you can just about like see Russian what's going glow on. caps as far as the eye can see, and loads <laughs> of little like glow in the dark bugs and stuff. Yeah, and they are super um, cute. And we got into this big cavern thing because there was like a cave in in the mine tunnel, and that had like dislodged. It wasn't like what the mine tunnel went down; the mine tunnel didn't lead to this. Um, there'd been some sort of collapse or the wall had fallen through or something yeah. which led to this. Mm. It wasn't like a normal part of the mine. There was a little kind of like crack through like one of the walls where we could see this this natural cavern. Yeah. It um, had like it was like a thirty foot drop. Yeah. And Ash was like, Okay, so yeah, no. Hope you've got rope and I literally just scoop up Junior Bridal style and Misty stepped to the bottom and like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a lot of fun to do. Uh, so he Bel- is going to snap me on the nose one of these days. <laughs> so uh, Beltan and uh, Samuel scrabble down the thing. and um, Very, very well. And then uh, Ash, on his phone, because um, Roll20 wasn't working properly that day, you start you start noticing something because there's like this huge lava flow in this in this like forest as well. So it's like, you know, things are illuminated. And he puts on uh, the theme from Jurassic Park. Yeah, and we're like... <gasps> And then gets us to roll initiative <laughs> because there is an Allosaurus and a Pterodactyl. They're just like hanging out and they're like, oh shit. And it's just like, we're going to fucking go. Um, so, and go we did. And go we did. We went hard. So we had possibly the best session of fighting that I think has ever happened. Not one of us missed a single thing in the Not entire one fight. Ooh, yeah. miss. I, Shit. We, I literally wrote this down. No misses during combat. Everything, everything we fought had only one round where it could actually hit us. Also, <laughs> I've noticed a, a pattern develop with Hella. Anytime I get into combat, I'm always last, and I can never really do much damage or anything because you guys are just so vicious. Yeah, so, so I. But it's I, okay because I'm I'm the protector. So, so I, I I I like got first in initiative. So I run up to the Allosaurus and I I like remembered that I have Hunter's Mark this time. Yeah, that um, was useful. So cast Hunter's Mark on it. Sta- you know, stab the shit out of it with my rapier, rolling really well. Um, like obviously I've got Colossus Slayer as well, so like when that's something's damaged, D8. I get another D eight. And then I cast I, I cast Blessed on everyone, so that's like an extra like one D four to like um like saves and yeah. and hits. Um so I stab the shit out of it, then Beltan goes up and What she does her weird like cl- like she because she's a druid, she can basically just randomly have like bear claws and just tears chunks and out of things. Fucking eviscerated. Yeah, she's like this. With, with her right hand she's moving left and with her left hand she's moving right and she just tears out like two giant chunks of its fucking throat. And, and it's just immediately dead. And I think, and it, I, I haven't like pull, finished pulling yeah. out my fucking longsword yet. And I'm like, oh. And at this <laughs> point, um, like I think the Allosaurus actually gets a turn and it takes a chunk out of me, which it does do a shitload of damage. But also, I have hellish rebuke because I'm a tiefling, yeah. so I set it on <laughs> fire. Because yeah, um, I did. Was that actually what killed it, or was yeah, it? Yeah, I think that's what killed it. Or was, I can't remember it. Did you get to shoot? It? Oh no, because you, you didn't get to shoot it, Junior. Because no, yeah. I really wanted to shoot it. Yeah. So I think that actually what is what killed it. Then the pterodactyl comes down, and I think takes a bite out of Beltan. Yeah, which I don't think doesn't don't do think too much damage. Much. And then like Junior just turned around, and was like pin shot, and just fucking 
killed it in one go. <laughs> yeah, in one round of sh- of your shooting with like all your fancy trips and things, <laughs> you just pick this thing out of the air and just murder it. And we're like, oh, okay. And that was it. And then a giant triceratops appears. Yeah, and then Ash is kind of quiet for a moment. He's like, after a few seconds after the dinner's died down, you hear an almighty stomping emerging from the darkness. And we're like, uh-oh. And it's just a giant triceratops just charges Junior and is obviously attacking him with the fury of a thousand suns. Yeah, that was painful. Yeah, like, he, um, because, oh, we figured out that, like, um, if... It had have knocked you prone. It would have done a trample attack, which would have done like an extra twenty damage. Yeah, he, on he top did of, one. Like, how like, many health points you had? He did like a charge attack, where if he charge it moves more than a certain distance, it gets an extra damage or something. And mm. that took me, the the initial hit took me down from like thirty seven hit points to like fifteen or something. Yeah. Something I can't remember exactly the numbers, but it was it like was quite a hit. It was less than half. I was down to less than half by quite a way in one hit. And then, yeah, I had to do, like, a strength or deck... I think it was a strength save to not be knocked over by it. And if I failed that, it would have got to do another attack, which could have easily killed me just in one. Because, um, yeah, because then, uh, then obviously, like, uh, you know, Junior's, like, had the shit kicked out of him a bit there by the Triceratops. Like, owie. Um, you actually managed to finally get in the fight then. Yeah, I did. I finally and, got it. Yeah, you cast Bless and, and was able to twat the thing about a bit. Like, because Hela's not, Hela's got a lot of things that help everyone and she can take a lot of damage. Yeah, but, but I, she like, doesn't I, hit super My damage hard. output is pretty minimal. It's, it's, I'm there to help the party. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this to is a, defend everyone because I've taken protection paladin. Yeah, so at this point, I run around the back of the Triceratops so I get a flanking bonus. Yeah. And again, just stabbed the shit out of it. Got over twenty damage, like in, in my thing. I ha- unfortunately, I did have to recast um, Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark, so it got knocked off because it's a concentration thing. And so I did have to recast it, which was annoying, but it was worth it because yeah, it started to tear the shit mm-hmm. out of this thing. Uh, Beltan runs up, does the same, yeah. rips the shit out of it. Um, then Junior basically stands up, and he Sarah Connors the motherfucker. <laughs> so there's literally a lake of lava behind it. And he stands up, and I don't know what the name of the uh, the shots. It was like a knockback shot. Yeah, it's like a pushing attack, or yeah, you should probably let Matt, Matt tell his his. Yeah, because uh... it was fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've got this pushing attack with being a um, battle master fighter or like something like that. Um, I get as few maneuvers, which is always fun to try and remember how to spell. Um... <laughs> My new wee brother. But I so I've the three I've picked. I've got the disarming attack which obviously disarms people, or has the potential to. A tripping attack, which makes things prone, which is very useful for flying things, because if a flying thing's knocked prone, it lands, basically, or it falls, depending on... It starts getting a bit weird, because it's not really a falling speed, because if it's prone, it just... Officially, it has a flying speed of naught, and then it's prone, but if it's really high up, there's a bit of a, like, well, it doesn't say how far it would fall in a round. Anyway, let's not get into that. (laughs) And the third attack I got is a pushing attack, which potentially pushes things back 15 feet. And I really wanted to do this against the first dinosaur that, that Samuel killed, because he was, that dinosaur was right in front of some lava. And I was like, this is only going to take one push, and I get to push it into the lava, and then lava does a lot of damage to things. But I couldn't do this to the first one, because Samuel had just murdered it already. <laughs> but, so, and, so this Triceratops, after doing a lot of damage to me, I was not happy. I was just like, right, okay, I'm going to do a pushing attack. So I moved around it, and it, this was a lot further from the lava. So I ended up like unloading like all three of my shots, and then I did an action surge and did two more of my shots. I think three of them with the pushing attack to try and because that's I'm only allowed to do a certain amount of maneuvers, just to try and make it <laughs> push back. And it unfortunately it failed some of them, but it just died from the damage before it got to the lava, which was very disappointing. But it was still quite satisfying to shoot it like four or five times. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good. And just like push it back 15 foot and then I'd step forward 15 foot and just walk with it. Just be going... <laughs> pff, 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 it with was the, amazing. With crossbow. It was. I think you described it at the time, uh, Snipe, as being like the bit where Sarah Connor is repeatedly shooting the T-1000 mm. in Foundry yeah. and it's like and moving then, back each and time. And then the last shot the Triceratops just shook its head and then just died. <laughs> it didn't fall into the lava, but it fucking nearly did. Yeah, I, it didn't give me the satisfaction. 
No. Um, so yeah, that was like, a, it was, I think, one of the best rounds of combat I've mm. ever seen because, yeah, no one missed a thing. Every yeah. en- every enemy we fought, no matter how much HP they had, got one attack in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I didn't roll that well, but we saw, we liked it. one of my attacks to hit, I rolled a two. Mm-hmm. But because of... Um, bless and aid. Bless. And I think it was just bless. It got the extra oh, D4 yeah, no, on, my, had, on my thing. Uh, yeah. And I rolled a four on my on the d4 which just got me to whatever its armor class was and i was like i just rolled a two like, to hit yeah it was <laughs> yeah nuts. i think i rolled a two i've got plus eight mm. to attack so that's because yeah the dinosaurs had a that that thing had a like surprisingly like 12 it was 14 so i needed the four on the d4 and mm. i got it so i was just like i've just rolled a two and i still hit it that's weird <laughs> <laughs> um that but yeah fun. It was it, it was it was a fun little fight. Because yeah. I've always wanted to put dinos, like when I was running my campaign, but because you're sort of seeing it as like a, it's a fantasy setting, but in your head that makes you think about it as like, it's oh, it's like medieval or it's old fashioned setting. Yeah. And I know that there's like, you know, elves and dwarves and orcs, but in my head I was just never really, I was like, oh, I want to put dinosaurs in, but they don't really fit. Even though there's no reason why dinosaurs are any weirder than, you know, a displacer beast or a beholder <laughs> or, you know, something even more weird than dinosaurs. Yeah, I'd, I'd say they are significantly weirder than a dinosaur. Yeah, but it just never, I just never really quite got round to putting them in because it just didn't seem to make sense. So I'm really glad that Ash managed to find a way of doing it and it made yeah. sense. Because dinosaurs are cool. Dinosaurs are cool. Dinosaurs are very cool. I, I think we should probably also talk about what happened directly after the fight as well. <laughs> So, we don't have to. So we we rush into like the foliage uh, because basically we're like we should get out of the open in case there's more of these damn things. Because even though we killed those remarkably efficiently, when we did get hit by them, they did like half, took half our HP off at any given time. So yeah, we don't want to get into any more fights. With also, these after we ducked away, we roll. We had to roll stealth because another triceratops came out. Yeah, and we were like, oh fuck. Um, but we were around all these like glowing fruit. Bioluminescent. Like bioluminescent fruit. Um, so Hella just decided to throw caution to the wind and just took a bite out of one of these. <laughs> In my defense, <laughs> you're always sitting there going, oh yeah, I mean, I wonder what it tastes like, I wonder what it does. Oh, this is interesting. And Hella was just like, you could just eat one, nom. <laughs> and then Ash was like, roll a constitution check for me quick. And I was like, oh <laughs> like, no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, um, turns out they make you high as fuck. Yeah, they do. And I ate two of them. Yeah. Because you tried to stop me from eating another one, and because I'm the strongest in the party, I completely bowled you over and ate one. <laughs> so, uh, Beltan also tried one, but passed the constitution save and was like, okay, this is a little bit, um, yeah. But didn't didn't get fully high off her tits like um, Hella did. <laughs> Hella eventually just... After being distracted by... Um, Junior's prestidigation fireworks. Yeah. It's like, hey, Hella, look pretty. And I'm like... Because <gasps> okay. we're worried you were just going to eat more of them. And you just... I would have done. You just, <laughs> you just fell asleep and like... No I, one I, could I, lift me because my arm is so heavy. So I don't want to get too deep into this because... It's, it was it, fucking it was a whole It was a whole thing and it's the, the, the was, podcast is going to be too long if we get too deep into well, it. But, the, everyone was sitting there going, okay, we have to climb a cliff because that's the only way out. None of us can lift her. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, so we were trying to figure out ways to do it and like she ended up like grabbing Junior and holding on to him like in her sleep. And because she's so fucking strong compared to Junior, <laughs> we couldn't get her out because no one else has good strength. <laughs> So, no, I was just—I just had Junior in a headlock, sleeping <laughs> happily, and he's like, like poured water, Can you like, help? like s- threw water in her face to try and wake her up. And all that happened is she was just wet now. <laughs> it's like okay. I—I ha- I have four notes from this session because <laughs> I'm not. Uh, des- we descended the shaft. <clears throat> Dinos. Hella got high and abused Junior, <laughs> and then then we slept. Yes. Those and are my four notes. So eventually, I think fucking accurate, eventually honestly. Hella, well, Hella pretended to be asleep af- after a while because she was awake, yeah. and because she was rolling, so, you know, you were rolling so high she in your was performance the check. Hug. Yeah, because yeah, she has a plus five to charisma, so, <laughs> so you rolled really high amazing. in your performance check. So none of us knew that you were awake either. So, <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, it was so fucking funny. Eventually, we will. I think eventually, I was like, "Hey, there's more fruit at the top of this this thing." So you woke up and just scaled it like you're a I fucking did. like 
Like I'm the million dollar man. Like you're a fucking monkey or something like. Yep. Um, and you get up there and anyway, we, we go and go to sleep. Uh, we level up in, in, in our sleep as well, because much like the last campaign, we're not leveling up from experience points. It's sort of... It's just time played, basically. Points of, points of the story that feel like we've earned it. It's yeah. the point at which the party levels up. Um, and, you know... I, ha- I have a haunting dream. You do have a haunting dream during the night. It's terrible. That you are attacked by multiple ducks of unusual size. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, you, I, I, don't you actually get killed I in got, your dream? I got KO'd in my dream. Yeah, by these because ducks. I got cornered by four giant ducks who were savaging me, and they were they were rolling. I got crit twice by those fucking ducks, and then I'm just like, ah! <laughs> and like, it's like, it's like Beltan. You notice during the night that Hella is thrashing a little bit in her sleep and mumbling angrily. So we wake up the next morning, and I'm like, I had the weirdest dream. Oh, it's so weird. I dreamt about giant ducks. And then Samuel has this big argument with me. It's like, you know, a giant duck is a swan. And I'm like, no. No, <laughs> Are you sure not. it wasn't a goose? Are you sure it wasn't a goose? And then, like, Junior goes to eat his pocket bacon. And there's less than what he's used to. So he pats himself down and finds, in place of a strip of pocket bacon, he finds a single goose feather. Mysterious. Mm. Very mysterious. And I'm like, I told you. So, um, as as New Day starts, we press on through the mines. It's getting, you know, there's less. Well, I think less... We've, we've, we've skipped over one important thing that I that I just I, I realised that Junior does. Oh yes, because <laughs> someone was talking about my pocket bacon being dirty. Yeah. And I realised oh. that wait, no, Junior just cleans the bacon with the prestigi- prestigitation cantrip. Because then you could have the pocket bacon wherever you want, and you can just like throw it on the floor or whatever, pick it up, and then use a minor magic spell to clean the bacon. So it's oh beautiful. yeah, that was yeah. it. It's like it's like Hella and Junior were talking about the the pocket bacon, and she was like, "How do you like? Do you just keep it in your pocket? Doesn't it get linty?" And he's like, "No." Throws it on the dirt and picks it up. And he's like, "See, <laughs> um, mostly dirt free." And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I think I ate that piece actually. Yeah. I snatched it. Um, but yeah, so we we go further into the into these these caves, which are less mines at this point. There's the occasional bit of thing where we can see that people have been down here, but it's not the proper mine anymore. And we find a rope bridge that <laughs> is rickety as fuck. Won't go too again. Won't go too deep into. We found out some things that um, Junior is terrified of heights. <laughs> yeah, this is new information to me as the player, and not presumably as the character. <laughs> who to cross it? Well, we had like so I think Beltan went across first, and and so She's like alive. so we had a rope between the two, and yeah. uh, Junior then went across. Uh, he insisted that I cast darkness on him, so, so that he was able couldn't to see, see down, so he'd be brave enough to cross. We all apparently forgot at that point that blindfolds exist and can just be <laughs> yeah. a piece of cloth. I didn't forget. It's just it's what he wanted, so I let him have it. Okay, I took off all my armor and put it in nibbly because I would be way too fucking yeah. heavy. So um, I then go across. <laughs> Um, and Mechanically, Hello- how this um, works, but just by the way, it's vaguely relevant. Is that yeah. there was some sort of like there was a few points on the bridge where we had to make dex checks to see whether, yeah. or there was a random roll to determine whether the that particular board was strong enough to hold us or not. And then if it did break, we had to do a dex save to not fall through. And even if it and even if it didn't say break, we had to do a dex check to make sure that we weren't like wob- rocking the bridge too much and if we failed to me- if we failed a fall a save to fall or if we failed multiple dex checks to sway bad things would have happened mm. and because i was in darkness i couldn't see i got disadvantage on every single one of the dex <laughs> checks or he saves did. He so did. it was a mechanically terrible thing to do <laughs> But, but fluff wise, very in character. <laughs> and I actually passed all of those checks, so I didn't yeah, get You see, fast. I get, like, when I got on, I was like, okay. Because you were the last person across. So Everyone I, else had crossed without too. Occasionally, something would break, issue. but nothing bad happened. So I wrapped it around my waist. I tied it, the rope around my waist, and I walked across the bridge. The first plank I stand on snaps immediately, and I get a crit one, and I fall through. <laughs> <laughs> and because of because Hella, I think. Yeah. Because of Hella. And then I get up, like, because everyone heave hose me up. The next one I stand on breaks. <laughs> but you don't fall <laughs> But I write myself, yeah. and then I manage to make it out the other side. Um, so, you know, we get across this... I remember, like, I can't remember, I think I... Didn't I hug 
like junior and he was like you are very like when was the last time you changed your under armor and i'm like yeah it's under armor you don't need to wash it we've we've been down here for three fucking days (laughs) um i've forgotten what the sun looks like so we uh we, we go we carry on and we eventually find a door well a pair of doors Yes. And, and a fuckable door and an average door. Yeah, that is yes. It is ascertained the that one of the left is fuckable. It is ascertained that one of the doors is more fuckable than the others. <laughs> yeah. um, whilst that role was happening, I was trying to um, f- you know figure out you know either whose door's safe, and I got to one and put my ear to it, and then a face forms on the door, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> it does not. But um, it, sticks, it sticks its tongue in your ear. Yeah, <laughs> uh, splinters on your tragus and. Basically, it it, it um, mistakes me for its master, who has not been down there in hundreds of years. Yes. By the sound of it, Lord Carriock. Lord Carriock, and like, it, it basically, oh, is that you, Lord Carriock? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and we're like, oh yeah, ooh, Lord Carriock's here. Ooh, That's yeah. the guy. And these are my friends. Isn't this crazy? <laughs> and I pass all my I, it, the the, the uh, like. Um, What's the word? Uh, deception roll wasn't too high, and I managed to foot my way through. But to be it. fair, it is a senile old. It's a senile. Old wood I tricked door. a senile old door to let <laughs> us through, and he's like, "So what's in the other door?" And he's like, "Oh, death, basically." Well, oh, okay. that's that's for that's for people to go in who are doing who who aren't you. Um, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm just making sure. I mean, just making sure that you remember. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, so we go through the so we go through this door uh, that lets us through. Um. And we're in this large kind of area that's covered in sand, like that sandy like a fine kind of, layer of sand yeah. on it. There's an altar in the middle, and the uh, the top of the room is is lined with runes, very dull ones. Um, Draconic Junior figures out, but also none of us speak like Draconic, so it was kind of like, eh. Uh, doesn't Junior speak Draconic? He just couldn't work out what it said. Yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, w- there was like one word that you could pick out karaoke. So yeah, you knew that. So, um, yeah. Go to the center of the room, and there's a um, altar that has a parchment and the phrase. Let's see what it said. Uh, Use your head to paint me red. Inside of thee resides the key. So we all figured out that was blood. So we're like, okay, so yeah, it's probably use your blood on this parchment, and it'll. Summon some because there is a door at the end, but it's locked. It was locked. You can't yeah. get through it. So we were all kind of like going through it. It's like, okay, so it probably needs a lot of blood. So should we all put some blood in? And I was like, no. If if you are going to engage in a blood curse, it's better for only one person to be involved in it. So I volunteered. So I hella like, volunteers. Okay, everyone stand back. And I was like, oh, this is gonna hurt so bad. So I cut, I cut, I cut my arm, and like this is another thing of like Nathan would be like, yeah, I've opened a vein like two minutes ago, waiting for you. What the hell? Whereas Hella is a bit more squeamish than that, despite so. the fact that she like takes horrendous amounts of damage all the time. Yeah, but that's okay because like, she's not doing it to herself. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Hella, you know, starts you know covering this parchment in blood, and mm-hmm. once she's covered the whole thing in blood. S- there is a, a sound of like moving sand, and behind her forms out of the sand a perfect replica of Hella that then becomes like, you know, not not sand coloured once it's formed. It's like yeah, properly becomes like just made. a duplicate of Hella. And then at that point, Ash is like, "Can I see your character sheet real quick, dude?" And I'm like, "Oh no, oh so, no." So yeah, we have to fight Hella. <laughs> see, Junior didn't realise. <laughs> I was stood, I was stood in the corner, face in the corner, trying to read these runes. So. I, I was right behind, so I was just like, oh shit, okay, stab it. <laughs> yeah, but then she like misty stepped into the corner, and at that second, Junior turned round to see Beltan and Samuel with their weapons out pointed at me. Yeah. Yeah, because the thing is, the first part, like, um, both Beltan and me had wailed on this, uh, on the fake Hella. To the point that it was on barely any health already. Which is why it Misty stepped the yeah, fuck away. Misty stepped away and used... Is it Lay on Hands? Lay on Hands. To, which uses, which like, your up, level. Which up to... Like, basically, I had a healing pool of 30 healing points. So, yeah. It basically just used all those at once. To get itself nearly up to full health. Mm. Um, and fortunately, because Junior was able to uh, roll decent on perception, you, you managed to work out that this thing was a bad thing and... Not me. And that we weren't just attacking the the real Hella, like, from the kind of context cues of what was around. Thankfully, because otherwise that could have yeah. been badly. Yeah. Um, 
and then yeah, we unfortunately for this this poor duplicate of Hella, we all just like fucking curb stomped it into the corner. I didn't really get any chance. To yeah, do you anything. didn't really get much of a chance. Which is pattern here. Yeah, you you yeah. had to unfortunately rolled really low on your initiative basically every time. So yep. like, and we've all rolled really well, so we've just beaten the shit out of things before you get to them. And of course, one player character functionally against four player characters yeah. is never going to work out well. It was also a good idea that not all of us put our blood in. Yes. Because Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. that would have that been, that gone very been a very difficult fight. Um, anyway, that caused the door to open. And so we go we go through, uh, we find a room that has like a lift in there. Um, that goes and... up to, because Junior sends up his... Uh... His completely normal, average hawk friend that was just there the whole time and nothing weird about it. <laughs> um, and sees See that this the... this goes up to like a locked grate that leads into the basement of a house. That's like a fancy wine cellar. So we're like, okay, we'll deal with that later because, yeah. Um, and we go through into the next room where there's... is basically the same as the first room, but there's nothing of note about it. There's just the open door at the end. So we go through there, and the door starts speaking to us again, which is basically that they're, they're kind of like a gestalt entity of talking doors. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, it's like same. a mirrored room, and like I think you ask, I was like, are you the same door we spoke to? He's like, yes, obviously. Yeah. It's like, okay, shit, sorry. And the door starts talking about, you know, it, it seems nice that you're, you know, you and your companions seem a lot, you know, if, well, if well, I like, might be Junior so... Junior and I ask him questions, and then when he answers them, we go, thank you very much, door, and he's like, oh, sir, if I may speak out of turn... <laughs> Like your companions are so much nicer than but nicer than the last ones. I'm like, oh yes, you know, I'm I'm trying to you know trade up, you know, ha- have a bit of a you know a better <laughs> kind of company company and and the doors like you know if I may not be so impertinent, it's nice to see you not being as as you were because you know like uh, some stuff that was done in here that was uh, a bit a bit bad and so start kind of like pro- you know pushing and like trying to lead him into like talking a bit yeah, about things I've done like, like we don't under- I don't understand why you had to kill so many artists and stuff and it's like hmm okay. Um, so I, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I was I was terrible in, in my youth. I'm trying to be turn over a new leaf now, and we're like, and it's basically like, okay, we'll put a pin in that because we've got stuff to do right now. Mm-hmm. But we'll um, get back to you. But we'll get back to you because a fucked up guy has lived here and has still got this shit down here. So we should check this out at some point, like see if we can find where the house on top is, mm. and see if we can deal with that. Um, and then we just kind of go a little bit further into into the thing and get back into the mines proper. But it's um, um, the the pathway we come out of has an illusionary wall. It does, yes. So we decide to because we've been walking for like an hour from the door to the illusionary wall, like. So we were like, okay, what we'll do then is we'll we'll set up camp behind we the actually, illusionary cause just, door. Because the thing is, we actually just walk through it and don't realize, and then we look back and there's just a solid wall between us. And so I just like poke poke at it and just go straight through it. I'm like, okay, this is yeah. an illusionary wall. So we set up shop behind it. Um, to rest for the day because like it's been a long day of traveling. Mm. Like we've been under we've been underground for like two solid days at this point. Yeah. Um, and we just we just shoot the shit for yeah, a Yeah, we just shoot the shit and, and like Because Sarah unfortunately she's got like a basically like an inner ear infection, so she just went to bed because she was in a lot of pain. Yeah. So you're like, okay, Beltan fell asleep first. And then we just sit around the campfire talking shit. And we just kind of, you know, talked about our characters a bit. And basically some of the stuff we've talked about, about backstory, like mm. informing the other players. I don't think I've said anything did. about Hela's backstory. We, we all know that you just want to be an adventurer and that checks out with how Hela is, so... <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, she's talking about her parents and like we were all talking about parents and stuff. And yeah. how like, oh yeah, my dad's a former knight and like, you know, my mum died, died when I was little and she died protecting a little kid from demons and she was very brave and all that kind of mm. stuff. And... And Junior, it's like in, in your story, it was just like, oh, everyone. Uh, I got this big feeling, like there's like, oh, I'm chasing the demon that destroyed my city. It's like I'm trying to figure out the origin of a blood curse. I want to be famous, <laughs> <laughs> basically. <laughs> well, no, she wants to be a hero. She wants yeah. to go and help. But it's like she literally just left her idyllic, like, bye, Dad. I'm gonna go and become a famous adventurer. And he was like, okay, honey, here's like a roll of like fucking like here's a bed roll and stuff. <laughs> Don't forget to send letters to your dear old dad. And she was like, okay, I won't. And then just walked into town. <laughs> That's literally her origin story. <laughs> right. She wakes up and goes, I want to be an adventurer. Bye, Dad. 
<laughs> but yeah, and that's that's where it left off. This was actually like three or four sessions. It was. Yeah. But just because like there was a really short ones, so uh, we didn't summarize them in previous episodes, or like the last one, just there was too much other things we were talking about to fit it all in. Yeah. So we ended up with an even bigger one this time. So sorry that was so long, but that's where our D&D campaign is up to now. Yes. Um, and we can't wait to uh, report back with the next session. So uh, we will. I know. I know that we're we're pushing two hours now, but we'll we'll get the questions out of the way, um, and we'll try and get through those uh, relatively right. quickly. Um, but first, I just want to bring up a little thing. Um, oh, yes. I, I start. I basically I want to start doing in the podcast because the channel is now getting. Really, it's pretty. We, we're getting we're pretty nearly decent, at thirty thousand subscribers, which is super cool. So I, I thought it'd be nice to start giving like a little bit of a shout out to smaller channels um, in the podcast and try and do like at least one each podcast to try and get some eyeballs on things that, you know, are, are, are not getting the eyeballs currently and they kind of deserve it. Yeah. Um, we so, like to signal boost a bunch of people. So I, I don't know how, like, whether we're going to keep this themed or anything, but I would like to put one out here for this this episode. Okay. That uh, someone who has just started doing YouTube videos, and I've watched their first video, and it's very good, uh, which is a lady called Dana Howell, who I've been following on Twitter for a little while because she does these... Uh, I f- started following her because she's been doing these really cool, like, synthwave night haunt. They're like all neon, Ooh, like no, neon, and it's they're really good. Like they're really cool. And she started doing painting tutorials, and she's a very cool painter, and does a very interesting style. So she's done a video on underpainting, which is where you do um, zenith or highlighting and stuff on. I've been looking into the highlighting mm, technique actually. Um, on your base, so that when you paint over it, you've got all like the highlights built into it. And it's a really interesting mm. thing, and it's a really well put together video. So um, if you're interested in seeing that, I'll put links to, when we do these things. I'll put links to it in the description and stuff. Um, but it's uh, on Twitter. She's Dana underscore Howl, and her YouTube channel is just called Dana Howl, as in Howl at the Moon. Um, <laughs> and just search for that, and you'll see it. And it's yeah, it's an underpainted <laughs> tutorial. By the time you hear this, I think she'll have a second video out, and it's. Really cool. She's got like 600 subscribers right now. The Criminally video. undersold. So if if we can get a handful of people into seeing that, I'll also link it on Twitter as well when I'm yeah. done with this. So, um, But yeah, definitely worth checking out. And it's interesting to see because it's a radically different painting technique to what I use. Read a radically better painting technique <laughs> to what I use. Um, and it's really interesting to see these things broken down and sort of presented in this kind of entertaining way with, you know, sort of... Fan, you know, a bit of fancy editing, and uh, I approve of the coloured lighting used. <laughs> Heck yeah! Um, so yeah, so yeah, check that uh, check that channel out. Nice. And now I guess get on with the questions and try and snap mm-hmm. through them. Yeah, try and get through these as quick yeah. as as possible. Yeah, you know what that means? It's going to be a four hour podcast. Mm, yeah. So what is the email address that people should send questions to? Snipe. <laughs> Ooh. Only drummer Matt. <laughs> Pterodactyl scream at gmail. <laughs> <laughs> at gmail.com. What is the actual email address? Only drummer Matt at snipe and wib at gmail.com. Yep, that's the one. It's in the description. Don't worry about it. Nailed it. <laughs> it's fine. So, what, are the, what right. questions do we have? We have a bunch of questions and recommendations and things. Okay. So, okay, first up, we have Omar. Hello. Couple of questions for us. I was wondering what any of your thoughts are and were about Sunless Skies. I have not played Sunless Skies. I've played the previous one that I think was called Sunless Sea. Mm-hmm. It's um, very Cthulhu-y, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Lovecraftian game uh, where you're in a boat and you go, uh, you go, you're on these underground oceans uh, and dealing with eldritch horrors and just generally shipping things around, sort of roguelike kind of thing. Mm. Okay. Um, not played the later one that is based around airships and planes and things. That sounds like um, it would be right up your alley as well. I, I, yeah, I should probably give it a go. I played it on stream once. It's a bit of a slow going game, but it's it's cool. I've been meaning to go back to it. I will say I have not played it because I'm just not super interested in games like that. But I do love the aesthetics. Mm, yeah. And the idea. So, yeah. Yeah. Drumble butt, what about you? I, I'd never heard of it. But, okay. okay. But it sounds cool, and airships makes everything better. So <laughs> I'll check it out. Um, their second question: What are your thoughts on if Imperial Guard will be getting any new models and/or more upgrades? Spruce. 
Um, I... Do you think do you think they need any? Are they do any models anytime soon, or do you think they would need any cool ones? I'm always here for like different kind of like customization options. I yeah. I love that kind of stuff. So I, I mean, I hope so. I hope we get some more kind of like faces and like. I hope we get some more kind of like faces or body types or just different hairstyles and and stuff like that. I just think that that would be really cool if they diversify a little bit. It would be cool, but I don't foresee us getting any in the near future. No. Um, what with the next big thing being Psychic Awakening and the Codex already being out, I don't think it's going to happen soon. No, but it's a nice idea. Yeah, I would love it. I, I, I because um, if you don't want to play with either the terrible looking Catachans or the very <laughs> old Cadians, um, mm. you kind of fucked with having to either buy secondhand and buy like the old metal models or um, the what I think some of them are still done in fine cast, um, but they cost a fortune to collect those sort of things. It would be nice if we got even just one more plastic kit of something that was a like maybe mm, some like more... you know maybe like a new Ragnar Black main model that is not anything to do with <laughs> Imperial Guard. No, but it is sorely needed. I I would not be surprised if the next time Space Wolves feature in something they'll like, literally come to my house and punch me that he gets Primarist. Oh, that would be I cool. actually, I actually think anything that, for a new model. I don't care. I, I actually am very surprised that he didn't get Primarist when they got their new Codex. Mm. I, I honestly do think that's that's one of the reasons why he hasn't had one yet. Is because they were like, oh, we're gonna because they would have obviously knew they were gonna do the Primarist thing for years um, beforehand. So I, I kind of suspect that's one of the reasons he's never had. He, he still hasn't had a new model. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're gonna get anything new for the Imperial Guard as much as I want it. Okay, and last up, a related question to that. Um, any themed guard armies, regiments you'd like to see? Like an existing one, or one that's like invented? Uh, I think invented one. What would you, okay. if you if you could do a new themed, or if someone oh, yeah. could do it because you think it'd look cool? Okay, do you have yeah. any ideas of what might be good? Um, I don't know because I mean, um, there's a lot of cool ones already existing. I, I would quite like. So I think it's is it the oh, I always forget what they're called. Um, the ones that all look like colonial era British troopers. Mm. Um, those ones, which oh, fuck, I always forget their name, but they have um, a sort of soft steampunk thing going off. I kind of think you could do something quite cool by going heavier on the steampunk for one. Mm. Um, may, I mean, if you're going to make one, then maybe that would even be an excuse to like make a um, squat army by using the, um, yeah, the steampunk cool. dwarves mm. from yeah. I was about, I was about to say you could you could ma- match up with those, yeah. And then like so, you know, have Lehman Russes, but with like an obvious steam engine out the <laughs> back rather than a petrol engine. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, well, it's not petrol; it's fucking um, steam, Promethium, but. Um, no, Prometheus. Um, but that, that you could do. I think you could do something cool with that, um, and not necessarily with the um, colonial era um, British troopers, because that's got issues with doing it. I understand <laughs> why people are uncomfortable about that. Um, but I think going for a more steampunky thing, you could do so that. That could be fun, or even go more heavy on the diesel punk. Like, uh, actually, I know, I know. Make a tabletop version of the Necromundan Guard that are just full of punks. That sounds hmm. awesome. I love it. Because there's that one picture that was in a fancy flight book of a, uh, a, ne- a Necromundan guard, and I've just always been like, it was just a fucking cool punk chick, but in like flak armor. And it was like, yeah, I want that. So, yeah, there you go. Make a make Necromundan guard. That's what I want. Fair. I can't top that. Snipe, any ideas? Kirby. All right. Okay. Good. Okay. Princess <laughs> no, Barry. No, make them all like Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> what like they're all just pink circles? Yep. Good. <laughs> really easy to mod. Are you they all? Glue the gun are, they, are they all in like mascot suits? <laughs> yeah. So they've got like the head poking out the top. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, rad. Yeah, they've sure. just got like a Kirby hat on, so they've got the face sticking out the mouth. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. I think that'd probably fit more with Tyranids, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. I was just looking at the Kirby figure I bought, you know, I was just like, I panicked, and I drew him up, I was like, what are you? I'm like, uh, Kirby! <laughs> uh, fair enough. All right, next up, Princess Barry. I think these are two recommendations rather than um, questions, so okay. I'll go through them relatively quickly. So they recently played a tabletop skirmish game, 
called Burrows and Badgers, where you play as anthropomorphic animals that fight each other. I'm listening. Okay. Which was apparently good. And all the metal, all the figurines are metal. It's quite cheap. Although I don't know if that's quite cheap by, you know, miniature games, which means <laughs> not that cheap, but quite cheap. And it's a good game, apparently. Oh, oh. Let's check it out. B and B. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I don't know if anyone calls it B and B. Bakers and bacon. Mm. Um, the other one was a recommendation for a game called Her Majesty's Spiffing. Um, it's basically apparently it's a point and click adventure. It's about three hours or so to go through. Sounds dodgy. Um, but apparently it's worth it's worth at least watching the trailer for. It's quite a okay. Laugh. Um, although for reference, it came out just before the Scottish referendum, and it's still a bit on the nose, apparently. So oh, okay. I haven't had a chance okay. to actually watch this. So apologies if, if if we've recommended something horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Sorry, I'll... Barry. I'm not judging you in any way, but I just haven't had time to check out what this is because I did the emails about an hour after I was meant to record the podcast. So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but a couple of recommendations. I'm quite intrigued by the first one of those, at least, mm, and I will yeah. check out the trailer for the second one. Okay. Next up, Zingbo. I like this question. You three are the final editors slash typesetters slash proofreaders for the Codex Astartes. Okay. <laughs> Nobody else is going to see the book before it goes to the printers and is distributed to, to the Space Marines throughout the galaxy. What change, addition, removal, etc. would you each make to it? Maybe less genocide. <laughs> yeah, like on, on the non-funny response, I'd say maybe don't do space fascism. Yeah. On the other side, I'd be like, maybe go into battle covered in baby oil. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'd, I'd say is um, just remove the bit about the uh, coloured trim on the shoulder pads because most people just ignore it anyway. Yeah. Uh, and it makes most chapters look terrible for certain companies. Because mm-hmm. it just isn't aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, drummer butt? I mean, I would say that all, they need to modify their armor. You know, when you were like in old school ca- cartoon pajamas, you've got like a little buttoned up butt flap that you could pop. pop you down. mean in old long johns? Yeah. Yeah. Are they big, are they going to start wearing ceramite long johns? Yeah. 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 They've got the codex to cut. support set. Actually. Yeah. 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 They've got to cut like a butt flap. And then you've got to put like just just like nail in a hinge onto it. So, like, <gasps> you need to up. do it like they do with like little baby butts, where they have like love heart patches. Is this because you want to see the butt, or is this for logistical concerns? Both. It's because I want to see the butt. Okay. Because I, I, mean, I, I was going to say because if it's for for logistical concerns, the the armor takes it all away. I know. Yeah, I know that. No, I know that. <laughs> okay. Next up, Brad. Um, I don't remember if you've covered this on the podcast or not. But do we have any thoughts on the upcoming Eisenhorn TV? I am um, I am cautiously optimistic. I'm intrigued by it, but there's there's next to no details about it. So I I think that kind of story of dealing with not necessarily just Eisenhorn, but Inquisitors in general, either Inquisitors or Rogue Traders, I think are the prime things to make a TV show out of because they are the least restricted by the world and canon that it is in. Um, so I think that they are the best choices for to, to make like a story that can be more consumed by the average audience. Because, yeah. I mean, you, you can sit there and tell the Horus Heresy story, but like, fucking hell, how much do you have to lay the groundwork for people who haven't already read about it? Like, and if you're making a TV show, it's not just for the fans. Yeah. It has to, for, you know, they have to be able to make it appeal to other people as well. Um, but as regards the show itself, barely anything's been said about it. So oh, I hope it's going to be good. Optimistic, but like that's it is it is hope, and that is it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't have any thoughts on this because I didn't know it was going to be a thing. I don't think. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, by the I'm way, surprised. there's going to be a ser- TV series based upon Eisenhorn, like an actual TV series on actual yeah. TV. Yeah. Wow. We're probably on okay. a streaming service with like a budget. Wow. With with a budget. You know, okay. like. Yeah. Like the old ones on the uh, on the VHS tapes. <laughs> it will not be like that Inquisitor. <laughs> um, but yeah, we don't really know a great deal about it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cautiously optimistic, though. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, excellent. Shaynus, some quick okay. fire ones. Okay. First off, did Drummerbutt ever get his swanky dungarees? I did. They're amazing. I want more. Yeah, boy. <laughs> there were some like amazing, like yellow or like mustard yellow ones in a shop in Bordeaux, and I never got them because they were quite expensive and I was unemployed. But now I have a job. I'm tempted next time I go back to see if they still exist. Dude, <laughs> just get them. You, you've earned um, it. 
Snipe, best werewolf in media? Ooh. Big question, quick answer. Uh, shit, there's so many. Uh, Kessler Wolf. Okay. That's Win. the um, American werewolf American in London. Yeah. Nice. yeah. That's a good werewolf. That is a good looking werewolf. Still looks good yeah. to this day. Yeah. Not the model, though, because that's the silicon has degraded significantly. But like you go back and watch it, it still looks like a good werewolf. Transformation sequence, fantastic for oh, time as well. so good. Yeah. Nice. Wib. Worst kaiju that isn't Manila. <laughs> uh, I've said this on, on a few occasions. There is in uh, I can't remember its specific name, although I believe it is something as stupid as, funnily enough, space werewolf. Hey, um, there is a werewolf enemy in what I think it's like episode four or something of Ultraman Leo. It's one of the really early episodes, and it is the suit is so shockingly bad. It's like. They could have learned a thing or two from Kessler Wolf. It's sub fancy dress level. Uh, no. It's really bad. Um, Is it as bad as the King Kong escapes like King Kong suit? Vastly worse. Ooh, like fuck. Like the King Kong escapes suit is like a fucking work of art. I love to how it has the blue inlay, so when it flaps up when they're fighting, you just see this big strip of blue, and you're like, "Where the fuck is that?" <laughs> um, yeah, that that's the one that I usually label as, as one of the worst I've seen. Uh, but it's also TV as well, so it's you know maybe not quite as. This is supposed to be quick fire. Yeah. <laughs> Drama mat. Drama mat. My question was favorite tower model. And I'm te- I'm tempted to throw a curveball and say the the sniper drones because I really like the sniper drones. I don't know why, but they're a bit sort of almost boring. But I just I just quite like them. That's fair. But I think actually one of my favorites. I just like. I mean, I got tower to start with because I liked the sort of Gundami mech suits. So I've got one in my drawer that I'm going to make is the commando in the Cold Star ah, yeah. armor, which is like the big jumpy commander model. So I think I I really wish that the Storm Surge was a better model because <laughs> that should be my favorite model. But yeah. it's just, what about the it's Riptide? Just, Riptide's all right. Yeah, yeah. And I quite like the new um, broadsides now, now that they look like how I modded mine to look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go Cold Star commander. Is okay, my favorite, cool. Probably. Yeah. Um, Next up, Florian. I read the intro because the intro is amazing. <laughs> Dearest Snipe and Wib, and hail, hail, mightiest drummer Matt the Great, most benevolent master of long range space trucking. I wonder why <laughs> drummer Matt likes this one so much. <laughs> so the question is My eight year old daughter started with English in school this year, so presumably they're not from an English speaking place. Yeah. Um, and I fail to explain to her the difference between cookies and biscuits. Can you guys, being on the Anglo-Saxon side of the channel, help me out here? It depends on where you're from. In America, most... Okay, biscuits are an entirely different thing. Oh, yeah, biscuits are like scones in America. Yeah, and basically... And what cookies we... are biscuits. Yeah, whereas here in Britain... We actually use words for what they mean. Cookies <laughs> mean specifically... <laughs> I say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Cookies mean specifically like a chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, like you get cookies from like the bakery that are like very large, uh, like chocolate chip or double chocolate chip. They're cookies, whereas like you get like bourbon creams or custard creams. Mm. They're digestives, which are graham crackers. If you yeah, yeah, like from outside the UK, which I only realised about six months ago is a graham cracker and not a gram as in, you know, a gram of weight, G-R-A-M cracker. Yeah. They, like, yeah I, did, I just assumed they were gram crackers. In the American not... accent, graham sounds like gram. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realise. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, in, in Britain, uh, the easiest way to put it is that in Britain, a cookie is a type of biscuit. It's just, yeah. And, yes. yeah, the different... Biscuits go soft when they go stale. Cakes go hard when they go stale. Yeah. So not part of the that's... question, but is a useful distinction to make. And... Yeah, well, it's sort of yeah. If you want to define a biscuit, it's a, it's a sort of sa- usually savoury or sweet, but it's like a put a dessert type snack thing that goes a bit soft when it gets you old. You see, I know what you're talking about, and you've just confused yeah. the fuck out. Probably. Of me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let us move on All from right. biscuit definitions. Well, that's, yeah. Cookies are biscuits. Biscuits yeah. aren't necessarily cookies. Hope this clears it up. <laughs> I'm making it worse. Unless you're Moving in a different on. country, in which, case, <laughs> in which case all bets are off. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, ne- next question. DD. I was just wondering, if the Space Marines were doggos, <laughs> what kind of doggos would the chapters be? Hmm. Let's not go through White all White scars would be Pomeranians. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, just to pick a few... Um, I'd see like uh, I'd see like Dark Angels as German Shepherds for some reason. 
Okay. Because they're very... I, I guess they do have a bit of a Germanic knight kind of mm. thing going on, so that's, that's possibly Space like... wolves are definitely like wolf dogs. Yeah, I Like mean, huskies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, for some reason, see the ultramarines as corgis. I was going to say that, I too. Saw them as, I saw them as Jack Russells, and like, yappy and annoying. <laughs> you see them as too adorable. Um, and I, I would see the Alpha Legion as Borzois. I see the Imperial Fists as St. Bernard's. Yeah, actually, mm-hmm. I see that. Or yeah. some of the big, like, maybe like, um, oh, is it, is it an Irish wolfhound? The fucking huge ones? Maybe. Or are you thinking about a... Um... Those giant, like Tibetan mastiffs, possibly, possibly, um, and of course, um, the thousand sons would have to be like a um... poodle. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> what, what are the uh, the red spaniels? Huh? Wiener dogs. Uh, no, a spaniel. Sausage dogs. You can't just say other dogs when I'm telling you it's a type of spaniel. Is it King Charles spaniel? The uh, well, ones those are... things are insane. I hate King Charles Spaniels. Or is it a Cocker Spaniel one that's, that's Cocker red? Cocker Spaniels like are red. a lot less... Yeah, mm. Cocker, Cocker Spaniels yeah. aren't always red. I don't know if they can be. Mm. Well, that would be the Thousand Suns anyway, because of Magnus. Yeah. That's my, my obvious okay. And objective. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, right, yeah. Um, yeah. Is that Black Templars, would, no. Black Templars would be like Black Labs or something. That's quite a boring answer. But... I think the, uh, um, the Alpha Legion would be Dalmatians. Okay. Because they can't change their spots. But they change their spots all the time. That's the irony. <laughs> and, and and the emperor is a fucking chihuahua. Yes. Because <laughs> well, he's that little back. <laughs> and horrible, nasty piece of shit who I everyone mean, that, hates. That links back to um, Didi's suggestion because they've, they've suggested that the world eaters will be chihuahuas because they're recklessly aggressive Ooh. and filled with hate. That's, That's very true. Yeah, Dri- driven to maim and destroy everything they set their eyes upon. So. Angron is definitely a chihuahua. <laughs> A chihuahua with spaghetti stuck to his head, so he's fucking furious about it. <laughs> and then, moving on to the very last question. Beep, 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 taco. Beep, <laughs> okay. beep, taco. Yes. Um, Wib and Matt, what are your favourite Space Marine chapters? And Snipe, what is your second favourite sh- chapter? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, uh, it depends on what day of the week you ask me, generally. Mm. mm. Um, is, it, is it like dogs? It's the most recent chapter you've seen. Is your favourite chapter? <laughs> yes. Uh, if it, if we're going pre heresy, then it's World Eaters. Um, I've just always been a fan of the pre heresy World Eaters. Uh, after basically after the novel Betrayer gave them, basically went from having zero depth to having all the depth, and I, I just I just like the look of them. Uh, Post heresy, um, I don't know. I have a soft spot for a load of like certain ones like Karsharadans I think everyone kind of oh, half yes. likes them yeah. at least uh, I, I have a soft spot for the Lamenters because um, god they need a break uh, Sons of Medusa I, I've, always, I've always kind of wanted to collect Sons of Medusa mm. um, even though they're actual dickheads uh, <laughs> I mean to be fair a lot of Space Marines are so it's oh fine. yeah yeah. Uh, there's, there's a ton like honestly it, it, yeah it depends on, on what day you ask me mm. I do actually really like the Space Wolves as well, honestly. Uh, <laughs> it's just you collect them, so I've just never really got around mm. to doing anything with them. Yeah. Uh, I have a bit of a soft spot for Black Templars, because my first ever 40k mini was a Black Templar that I got. I think it was um, it was when I, back when I was collecting fantasy as a kid, so you know when I was like 14 or 12 or whatever age. Yeah, like three weeks I... ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it was, um, I think I must have got it for free, and like just as a like painting demo oh, thing first in, in a game workshop free, or something. I see. Yeah, oh well, yeah, mm. I mean it is basically crack. Yeah, plastic. But crack. yeah, but yeah, I think I got given a black Templar then to paint and whatever, and I've just had a bit of a soft spot for them since then. Even though I've never really had more than this one model, or particularly looked into what they do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe it's best not to. There's a lot of them. Is the general okay? Mm. They 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 constantly are like oh yeah we're we're like a thousand strong mm, yeah mm, totally. they say mm. hiding three thousand extra marines. Oh, really? like, okay. like oh the whole of your chapters here like oh, as a thousand marines show yes. up like yes <laughs> hope we don't get killed uh, and they they are yeah mass close combat army so uh, and they also mm. interestingly tend to have their neophytes um, tend to fight with them rather than being in dedicated scout squads and things like that. Yeah, I did at one point look at the rules, but it was, again, a long time ago. Yeah. They're interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Snipe. Mm, pre heresy, I've got to say the Lunar Wolves. They're just cool. For they are also wolves. They, they do yeah, bigger wolves. wolves. Um, Post heresy, I'd say uh, Salamanders because they're lovely. Yeah. And, and honestly, like, 
Vulcan is such a darling and I love him so much. But aesthetics... Salamanders are one of the nicer space route chapters. Yeah. Like, they're the ones that you like, believe... They occasionally go and like hang out with their families and stuff. Since <laughs> before, and it's like, oh, that's really nice. They go back and visit their mamas. and they're, stuff. They're, one of the most... <laughs> they're the nicer space fascists. Yeah, <laughs> yes. exactly. But yeah, and I say aesthetically, Raven Guard. Okay, because yeah. fucking of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very, very last question from Beep Beep Taco. Mustache dawn or no mustache dawn? Mustache dawn. Mustache dawn. Yeah, obviously, it's, I don't know why it's a question. Yeah. Good. He I'm must ask gl- you a question, but he'll shave it for later. <laughs> I would. I, I, I would absolutely love it if they if they made a new model for him at some point, like where say, he had like the proper handlebar, like and they actually shops. and they actually gave him the the, uh, the mustache. Yeah. That would make me oh, so happy. Yeah. I would probably just cry. <laughs> it would be glorious. Excellent, and that is it with the questions. Excellent. Okay. Um, Thank so- you very much, and sorry we rambled so much, but not really. Hopefully we'll <laughs> cut out a bunch of it, and this episode will be like a, re- a relatively normal length. Mm, I want to go eat dinner now. Yeah, let's go eat dinner. So, yeah. uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. I hope Bye. you had a good time watching, listening, enjoying Being. this podcast. Being this Consuming. podcast. Consuming. Consume. <laughs> Rewards. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going from this, so goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Good. Well...